Is Bootcock, is that the right? Yeah, yeah the right that's word. the right Absolutely. word. Absolutely. Yep. You are listening to the Bomb Hole. Bomb Hole Podcast. It's going to be very hot. It's going to be very uncomfortable for everybody. <laughs> the Bomb That bitch is crazy. All right, here we go again. Another week, another Bomb Hole. Stony Buds, how we doing? Doing good, dog. Yeah, you feeling good? Feeling good. Really excited about today. We got Mr. Danny Davis in the booth. Danny, what's happened? Not a whole lot, man. It's been an awesome break of yeah. non-traveling, chilling, finding some silver linings in the madness. You want to paint a picture of like what growing up in Michigan was like for you? Michigan, you know, ton of lakes, much like Minnesota. We got so many lakes, a lot of time on the lake. We had our own boat. It's called the Bluefin 2. Uh, we would... You know, we played a lot of sports. My folks, uh, their thing was you got to do something every season, kind of. Like, if it's, you know, if it's snowboard season, cool. You're, like, snowboarding, and that's that's great. Uh, but you got to do some sport every part of the year. So it was golf, soccer, football, baseball. Um, golf team was kind of the one that was the raddest, though. Just walking around for a few hours on a golf course after school. The good life. Pretty rad. So I played a lot of sports, and uh, I think why snowboarding kind of worked, at least in my, in my, my dad knew we enjoyed it, he enjoyed it, but from a sport perspective, once we started doing it as a contest, I felt like my folks were like, yeah, let's invest some money in going up north and, you know, uh, traveling a little bit, so. At what point did you go from Michigan to Vermont? I want to say, I can't, I can't remember when I started doing USASA, but... 12 or 13, I went to nationals in Mammoth. My first my first uh, nationals was in Mammoth, a couple years of doing that, and then uh, never really did the Green Mountain Series. Once I got done with USASA, we were, like, doing triple crowns and Grand Prix when I was, like, 15. My mom would take me, and uh, we'd go roll just me and her to, like, Utah – Tahoe, whatever, and I'd get into these contests back when, like, you could be anybody, kind of, and just get into the Grand Prix, Triple Crowns, U.S. Open. There was a lottery to get in. So that was kind of our thing. And then I went to a mountain school once I, like, kind of got some results at yep. those. Okay. And then it seemed like there was, like, something clicked in one of the U.S. Opens where you just had basically, like, standout writer was it rookie of the year or? yeah i think it was my last year at stratton mountain school okay. so when i was in 10th grade the school that i was going to my public school was like hey you know you kind of need to be held back a year because you missed like 40 days of school and my mom was like well that doesn't make sense because he like did all the work and he's got fine grades and they're like yeah but that's just like the rule and so we had to then like figure out a different thing so i went to sms Continued to do the Opens, traveled around, and then my last year, I think I was 16 or 17 years old when I graduated, and uh, Rookie of the Year, man, was all, or Rookie of the Open. Rookie of the Open. Oh, yeah. Open. And then Separate. maybe a year later was Rookie of the Year with, yeah. like, Trans World and things like that. But 2005 was kind of like the first year I had, like, a real result. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember, like, maybe 2000. Uh, it would be 2005, 2004 maybe. We were in the Triple Crown in Breckenridge. Danny Cass was in the finals, and I was doing slope finals, and I made it. And I won like 800 bucks, and me and my mom were like, whoa. Like, this is insane. 800 bucks for that? Like, awesome. On to the next, you know? And that's when I think uh, I got a little bit more addicted to just beyond the snowboarding from from nine years old to – 14 years old, it was all fun, all just, like, loving it, purely not thinking about anything in the future. You know, you're a kid, you don't have you're, – you're maybe dreaming, but you're not even sure what you're dreaming about. Uh, and, then, and then once I, I kind of got into SMS and stuff like that, it was like, okay, I'm going to, like, make some goals here and get some dreams going, and, like, I'm riding with the guys I'm seeing in videos. This is – Psycho. And then, and you guys had that crew at SMS at that time is like probably Louis Vito, Jack Matroni, Michael Goldschmidt. Yep. You guys had like a stacked 
little wave of talent coming out of there. Yeah, and all those guys kind of. So I think Goldie was maybe a year older than me. He graduated before um, I did. And then Jack and Kev, Kevin Pierce, yep. went to SMS as well. Luke went to SMS. But by the time I got there, those guys were moving to Mammoth. They were, like, over the East Coast, and uh, they were headed to Mammoth. And I was like, whoa, that's – like, I, I thought I was on this next level of being uh, – in the snowboard world, you know, and being like a competitor. And those guys were like, Psh, SMS, like, no, we're going to Mammoth. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> I see how, I, I see how this is. Like, I'm going to go to actual school and you guys are just going to go snowboard all day, you know? So. And not ride the East Coast. Yeah. Ride, like good <laughs> condition. But Goldie was there for one year. Love Goldie. Um, Louie was my roommate. Nick Russell lived in the room next to me at SMS Jeff VC was his roommate. Jeff was a great, is a great snowboarder in the military now, flying helicopters, which is cool. Oh yeah. And then Jared Hendricks. I don't know if you remember I do Jared. Remember him? Yeah, you wore tight pants. Yep. Jared was <laughs> the, I think the original starter of tight pants. You might be really. And I'm I'm gonna throw that out there. I know like Nima and like, I don't know who who really started, but Jared was wearing it when I went to high school. So that was like. A long time. We need yeah. to track down who did originate tight pants. That'd be tight. I, I don't like it, Little for an- the record. <laughs> yeah. Not a fan. <laughs> Me neither. Um, Me neither. Like, like analog back in the day when Dylan Reader, rest in peace, um, and like, and Arto and all them were on the, the skate team. They were like, don't you want like tighter pants? Why do you want all that looseness? Like, don't you want them tighter? I'm like, no. And they're like, why? I'm like, because you're, like, doing more yeah. out there. You can't have the tight Gore-Tex on. Like, that doesn't work. It, it doesn't. It's Also, th- big boots. Yeah, you get, it's just a weird. It looks weird. Yeah. You look like an action figure. Kind yeah. Of. Especially like, at the, the, depending on the uh, width of your stance. You true. know, you look at, uh, you know, a certain half-pipe rider that has <laughs> the very tight pants and the wide stance. This is it's a bad combination. Yeah, it's a weird combo. I don't want to name any names. Um, <laughs> we did but, last episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, so Jared went to high school with us. Um, just uh, solid crew. Jeremy Thompson. I don't know if you remember. I do remember Thompson. Yep. Um, gosh, so many good so, riders. to circle back around to the Open, it, is there something that clicked? Because you're kind of like getting these $800 results, trying, going to all the events. And it seemed like after the Open, things just erupted for you super lucky though in that event you know like again snowboarding is a lot of opportunity that you need to just take advantage of right and you get these opportunities and I got lucky because Burton just kind of just gave me the keys you know like gave me like a little incentives contract so I wasn't really like being paid um, but I could make incentives on contests so it was just like here, work hard, and you'll get rewarded. And and then once that kind of relationship got built, there's just so many good people at, at Burton. And really, I owe a lot of it to, like, J.P. Solberg and Gigi and DCP and Roman because they were just, like, behind, behind me. You know, Burton was like, hey, we want to put this kid with you guys and let him ride with you. Um, and you're referring un- to Unink, Unink right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for the listeners that don't know, Unink was like the super oh, sick Oh, man. If, yeah. you don't, if you don't know Unink, <laughs> you got to do some homework. That, I mean, that was the crew. Like, I made the mistake of asking if Jamie Lynn was a girl. I don't know if you guys have ever I heard have, that. I've actually story. heard this old wives' tale. Um, I haven't. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know my history either. Like, when I was younger, I didn't know some snowboard history that I should anyway. And uh, I called Jamie Lynn a girl. And, and uh, someone called you out? Oh, yeah. Well, it was like, I think we were at the Arctic Challenge, and somebody's like, oh, Jamie, Jamie's coming, like, downstairs or whatever. And I was just like, right on. They're like, oh, yeah, dude, you got to meet Jamie Lynn. And I was just like, who's she? <laughs> and it was just like. Everyone just like, whoa. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> Music stops. <laughs> Keir Dillon was just like, Keir Dillon always had my back, Like, you know? who's, what is going on? Yeah, but he was just like, dude, you blew it. <laughs> but. Um, You've ridden for Burton in, like, your whole career. Well. This is a good story. I mean, I used to ride for this snowboard company called Climax. Really? I've never heard of Climax. Weird name choice. (laughs) 
climax. Super huh? weird. I think they were thinking maybe it's like the top of the mountain. I yeah. don't know. Where I don't, were they out I, of climax? Uh, Michigan. 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 Oh. Waterford, Michigan, I that's do that, believe. That's not what I'm thinking when I think climax. <laughs> what are you thinking, bud? Uh, sh- I'm thinking about intercourse here. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting my climax. You're climaxing. I'm peaking. Or cli- I don't know. Okay. I don't know what I'm thinking about. So you're climaxing. So I was climaxing. Um, I remember one of my first USASA nationals, like, Broke a climax. My dad like called the guy like, "Yo, Danny broke his board." The guy was like, Psh, "That sucks. We don't have any more. I don't know. We're gonna send you one." Um, you know, I don't think overnight FedEx was going down then. Maybe yeah, they weren't down. Um, but so I rode for them, and then my dad had a sponsor. Me. We made a sponsor me video, you know, and my dad was going to this wedding, and he was like, "Hey, I heard the VP of Burton's gonna be there," and I was like, "What?" And he was, I was like, let's, and he was like, I'm gonna take him your your video tape. <laughs> so Dave Schmidt, I think the VP of Burton, I think that was his name, Dave Schmidt. My dad just walked up to him at a wedding, didn't know him, never had met him, and just handed him a sponsor me tape with CKY as the first song, like wow. uh, one CKY Good song, song choice. And yeah. yeah, it was a uh, yeah. I, I was like, my brother was a big influence on the music, but. Uh, yeah, my dad just gave this guy. What a, kind of footage are we talking? Yeah, on what are we? Can we get our hands on this? Yeah, we. Yeah, oh yeah. Mom's, we mom's got to digitize for Dude. sure. Yeah, we can get some. We're our gonna hands pop on that, that in the show notes. Um, it was a lot of, like, like head chucking kind of snowboarding. You know, like where tricks initiate here. <laughs> Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Like. No energy from your body, just like you go off the lip and it's just like, I'm going to do a backflip, but nothing else really kicks out. A lot of tricks like that. Head chuck. That's some new terminology. I'm going to actually take that and pass it off as my own to my, my friends and use that. It's great. It was a lot of like Mason Aguirre, you know, will attest to this. Like I had hands down the worst style when he first met me. Really? Like, really bad. Tailfish. Um, Really? You know, grabbing tailfish. Like, and Mace was like that guy who was just super steezy and was way above where I was at in my career and when I met him. You know, he was like on Palmer but getting on Burton. And I looked up to him for a lot of the style stuff. But I would say that's where, to, get, to answer your question, that's where it really clicked was when I met Mason and Kev and Jack. And really, like, I met them in Vermont when I went to SMS. But when we started traveling together with Burton is when, like, that shit's really clicked. And, but, you know, really the support from a lot of people around Burton just being, like, giving me a lot of opportunity. Get, putting me on trips. You know, I, I didn't even have to think back then. It was like, you're going to the Arctic Challenge, then you're going to go here. And it was just like, sweet. Yeah. And that was kind of the origination of the Friends crew with you and Mason yeah, and definitely, all those guys. Definitely. So when I got the rookie at the U.S. Open, then they gave me an invite to Arctic Challenge. And I went to Arctic Challenge, and that's where I really hung with, like, Keir Dillon for the first time, like, a lot. And, um, you know, like, Freddie Osbo, and really started to just, just get more in the scene, really understand, learn about snowboarding. Because growing up in Michigan, you don't really... There's not a, it wasn't a scene, you know. We had Chris Inglesman was from Michigan, I do believe. Um, but that was all, and Sherman Poppin. Sherman uh, Poppin's from there? Yeah, snowboarding was actually invented in that's, Michigan. That's cool. In Muskegon, I do believe. Were um, you from, like, Detroit? That was where the snurfer was made. I was from, yeah. So I'm wondering so, how a kid. For those viewers here, we got the mitten. I'm from down kind of in this region. We would board a lot up in here. And then you got the UP up there, which I haven't, haven't dabbled with much. But, uh, yeah, uh, anyway, yeah, that, you know, so, snowboarding didn't have a huge there, scene. Like, get good on your level, you know? Night ride. I was listening to Louis Baumhole, and he's absolutely what he said, just night riding. You could ride, like, school would happen. I'd come mm-hmm. home, my mom would be like, get your work done, you can go board. And so I'd get my work done and, and, and go go board, get my schoolwork done, and, and go ride till like, 10 p.m., 11 p.m. And I heard Louis say, like, 2, 3 in the morning, some weekends, yeah, you could ride super late at our mountain. And uh, my parents were super into that, like, not going themselves with us because it, it was a really boring hill if you were just a shredder. 
three hundred and six feet vertical Alpine Valley. Shouts. Um, shouts. And they got they had a half pipe and they had a dragon, but it was a ton of hand built lips. It was like cut with a dragon maybe once every month, two months, because it was broken a lot. And then there would get highway hits dug out, and it would just be tow rope laps on that. Finding any, you know, back in the day, we, you would hit before snowboard parks were super common. You would find those snow blown mounds, oh yeah, and just dig a hit out of their yeah, backies. A lot of head, a lot of <laughs> head backies. Once once backflips clicked uh, at my home mountain, like that, your status kind of went up. We had this kid Joey Mango. He was a great shredder. Shouts well, to Joey Mango. I'm gonna yeah, get Joey Mango. I like that name. <laughs> Joey Mango gets some air horn just because of the name. He's the man. Um, great golfer nowadays. Uh, anyway, he learned backies, and that was like, all right, that's where I got a step to. And uh, once you learn backies, like your clout at the mountain was just like, damn, he's got backies. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, there, there is like a – because similar footsteps coming from Massachusetts, small local hill. Then you go to Vermont, right? Mm-hmm. And there, there's, like, levels to where, like, you know, you're back east, you're Massachusetts, you're doing 720 mm-hmm. tail fishes, right? And for, and then, but you're the man for doing a 720 tail fish. 100%. And then, or not grabbing at all. Or not grabbing at all. Or <laughs> head flips or whatever. And then you go to Vermont, and then people are like, yo, you got to grab between your bindings and your tail. And then you go, and then eventually you hang around Mason and all those guys. And that's how, it seems like that helped you find yourself, you know, like, you guys are all pretty similar as far as the friends crew, like you, Kevin, um, Mason, you guys all sim- like Burton, and then you kind of slowly evolved and found yourself more, you know, your own lane along there. Man, like it, it was a really long like like the friends thing. There's so you know you could go so deep into that, but like you know, Kier was kind of the part of that because yep. we were on these Burton trips where it just be next photo shoot, next contest, next whatever, and Kier, Kev, Jack, Luke, Mace, Mickle, and Lego, really, too. Lego was like the honorary Burton rider yeah. who wasn't a Burton rider. <laughs> you know, he, he would roll with us all the time. And uh, and then Ejax, you know, like it just evolved, too, the crew, the people we met. And then we, fu- we kind of got over it because it was just, like, starting to feel, like, exclusive, sort of, like – at one point, it was meant to be really tight, but then we just had so many homies, and we weren't wanting to be so clicky that it felt like weird. The friends crew was kind of not out. friendly, <laughs> you know. It's like yeah. kind of <laughs> clicky, and we realized that, and uh, you know, and so you know, we all continued to do our own things. But man, for so long, that friends crew was just more like we'd show up to contests and we had each other's back. And you see it all over snowboarding now. Like, all the kids are just so supportive of each other. But back in the day, it was, like, pretty competitive. Pretty, like, you know, go into the woods before you run and, like, get in your zone and not really, like, hang out at the top of the pipe. And we were all, like, just messing around, filming each other. The lighter we could be up there, the more fun oh, yeah. we could have, the better we were riding. And that was that was the 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 click really that I liked about the friends crew and and just the people in it like those guys raised me. So you weren't off in the woods. Yeah, well, hell no. But I also some wonder people, what's going some on. People were. I wonder what they're doing. You in know the what woods. they do, I know man. What I'd be you doing. see it like at was, the yeah. You see it at the top of the pipe. Some people are literally like spinning their run. Yeah. Mm. Or drawing it in the snow, or imagining it. And hey, you do your thing. Like yeah. I don't. I'm not judging. You know, uh, it's just not how we operated, you know. And it's, I, it's I'll not. tell you what, I gotta, I'm going to jump ahead chronologically because I've, I've seen you at the Dew Tour last year, for example. And uh, you're, I have a two-parter question for you, but you're super... Did I go into the woods and draw my run in the snow? <laughs> no, you didn't. You were, <laughs> okay. you were extremely <laughs> casual and chill. So part one, but you had your headphones in, right? Oh, yeah. I, I'm wondering, what, the, what are you slapping in there, dude? What do you got going? Dude, all over. Uh you know, the, the the kids, I call them the kids, but it's like Brock and Mark. Rap. They get me into the, you know, like I, Mark always makes fun of me because like, he'll be like, I'll be like, you guys want to listen to some hip hop if we're in my car or something, you know? And they're like, yeah, put some hip hop. And it's like Biggie and yeah. like Big L and like whatever. And they're just always like, okay, like, can we get out of the old school hip hop? Like, and get, and then they got to get me into some new stuff. And you find some of that on those playlists. 
But they're like 40 songs deep, okay. all over the map. Okay. You got the next button if you're not liking what you're hearing. I'll, I'll tell you personally. I, I call it destiny mode. Usually it lines up right when you're going to drop in. Oh, like, yes. Well, you know, sick. like the right you song get something, you're like, yeah, this will work. See, in my head, I picture you listening to like Grateful Dead, some wailing. like Sometimes. Jam, and I'm like, how in the hell the are you going to do a front 10 double in the pipe with goddamn Grateful Dead jam solo going? Yeah, I don't know about jam solo. You got to pick your <laughs> tune yeah. for a Grateful Dead tune to put on that kind of playlist um but there's a time for everything but you know every a lot of writers you know i definitely put a playlist on and there's like 50 songs on it i know mcmorris like he's got one song he knows what he's gonna play bumps it super loud or maybe a couple songs that he knows he's gonna listen to but sometimes there's that song that you're like where is that one? oh yeah hell yeah mm-hmm. i like destiny mode that's tight destiny mode yeah. yeah and and the hip-hop nowadays is Shit's catchy, man. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I, I love Hot it. Shit. I love it. And then part two, to keep staying on that subject, this trips me out coming from our world. But you're the amount of people that are there for you to do well, for example, right? Like you got, you got, you know, you're on do Mountain Dew. You got your do team managers. You got your Burton team manager. You got, I don't know if you got a U.S. team coach. A lot of these guys do. You got family members. It's like hey, your lady or whoever. There's so many people there for you to do well. You have a wax tech, a guy that takes your board and waxes it and makes sure you're going fast. Shouts to Ryan McDermott. Dude, shouts to Ryan. That guy's the man. <laughs> that guy is the nicest guy in the world. Like all the weight, the weight of all that, of like, okay, we're we're here to see Danny succeed. Like, I would fold. I feel like, it, it, how do you deal with that? You seem like you're just casual. You know, it's also a different era okay. that I'm from and what's going on right now. Like. Yeah, we had a wax tech. Like, when I was younger, when I put myself in, like, the 18-year-old Dan, we had a wax tech, we had a U.S. team coach, we had team managers. All just there to help, though. I mean, those guys are all rad people. You know, Mike Jankowski, Ricky Bauer, Tommy Shasheen was coaching for a while. Um, you know, Benny Bright was, like, has really, it's just more, like, support. So I think those people aren't, I think, not everybody has that kind of support. There is some coaches who I think are probably a little pressure-y and stuff. And it probably works. You know, these kids probably step up when they want, when they need to. But uh, our vibe, at least my experience with it, was everybody's there to help. But it is a little stressful. You know, your folks fly in, your lady comes, she's down at the bottom. I can see how it seems stressful. But uh, I think everybody in my circle, at least, has always just, like, been – they're just stoked to come. My parents, it's like, that's their only vacations they take are to come to my contest. So they're like, if I don't do well, it's almost better. I get more time with the homies. You know, we get to have fun. And that was how the Friends crew was. Like, everyone, somebody was going to do good, so there was a reason to celebrate. But if you didn't do well, you kind of got to have more fun than they did because they had to get all hunkered down and in their zone. Yeah. And Kev was really good at that. You know, like, he did well every time. And he was that guy who was, like, going to bed, and we're like, right on! <laughs> <laughs> Kill it tomorrow! So out of the whole crew, someone's going to crush it either way. Somebody, so Mace is going to show up. Yeah. Luke's going to show up. Dominate. Everybody in your crew would dominate. That was probably a fun era back then. Slope style and half pipe. That's yeah. what was so fun, man, was back then, the week of being a contest rider was so packed. But it was built for it. Now it's... Hard to be a part of both, really hard. And I think snowboarding could lend to that a little bit better, not only with courses and 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 it's get, we're getting there, you know. But uh, having people do both would be sick. I understand it's it's just not possible you, right now. How do you say it would lend to it? What do you think it would be a ha- the riding yeah. lend to it a little bit more? Um, I, I mean, I think the the format of the contest because right now it'd be super hard to catch both. Yeah, practices practice, even. main, or quality. They're just overlapping. Yeah. yeah, and then I just think the courses are so, if you're not always riding jumps or you're not always riding pipe, it's, you kind of got to pick one or the other. The tricks are so buck, and yeah. and and the jumps are, are you know, you really got it. Like, for me to just jump onto some jumps and They're try big. to be a competitor. They're big and like you got to ride that stuff all the time. But if the courses were a little bit more of a mashup of things, um, you know, you could still have a transition event. 
and a jumping event or something, but like kind of like a peace park type vibe. Yeah, like we've been due to her, we've been dancing with it for a little while and it's it's working. It's not always and I feel bad, like Scotty James, I feel like this year and myself included, we were like a couple things that were, were really hard to ride in the transition event. And he was just like kind of pissed that like, the, you know, this is a mainstream event and, and the U S open, you know, that super tight 13 foot was really hard to ride. I could see some of the riders are frustrated, but, and I, I apologize, but I think we're just in that transitional phase of figuring out how these transition events work. But to me, and I don't know about everybody else, straight half pipe is getting well, a little a boring, bit right? stale. Yeah. This is the thing. That but the format and how we cut those things, and it's, we're just in this phase where we got to experiment. 100%. And the thing that's really cool for the people that don't know, like watching you in practice, every rider goes, they practice their routine, the exact run. They do it like 20 times in a row. And then you watch Danny, and he's riding the course doing a different run every single time he drops in. Looks like you're having fun, right? Maybe to a fault. But, <laughs> but like, to a fault. I think that, 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 that the big half pipe becomes more like a gymnastic routine when it's the same all the time, right? Or what do you, what do you think needs a change? To me, it's the story of vert skating, right? How many vert contests are you watching these days? It's gone. And I think... And I apologize again that we're in this experimental phase, all you half pipe riders, but we got to adapt or else the half pipe riding will, the transition riding will sort of die and it will just kind of go into slope style and you'll just have this mashup course that is a slope style event. So if we can really experiment and get good at making these transition events, mm -hmm. like that's all going to survive, you know, and that's where I think vert skating kind of went to like mega ramp and bowl contests you know that's kind of what you see now and to me that's much more interesting to watch in skateboarding than than a vert ramp contest mm -hmm. even though vert is so sick on a skateboard yeah, absolutely and, 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 and I, yeah. yeah even on a snowboard the the conventional half pipe runs like i mean you watch these guys they're going huge and, oh it's and psycho like i was it's so dangerous man <laughs> it's so crazy <laughs> it's icy icy and you guys are going humongous and i get scared i yeah. get scared it looks for sure scary. oh actually that's gonna sorry to interrupt i got a guest question that oh, nice. ties into exactly what we're talking mm, about tight. and this is from your roommate nick russell so here we go hey what up bomb hole nick russell calling in from Truckee, california got a two-part question for your guest donnie davis firstly can you text me the number of the plumber because the septic has overflowed again? Secondly, what's more scary for you? Dropping into a bulletproof half pipe at night with thousands of people watching? Or front pointing up a bulletproof cooler in the middle of nowhere? Hands down, coolie. The coolie. Mm, more yeah. scary. It's just not my realm yet. I'm learning. Every time I get onto something like that with Nick Russell, like... His confidence is so good because, and crampons are incredible. Like, you really are got the hold you need. They're so incredible. But uh, it's just comfort. You know, I just haven't had that time in the saddle yet uh, with climbing. And, you know, Nick's like rapping in his stuff and it's cash for him. And that shit's. By rapping, you mean using ropes and stuff? Ropes, like that? yeah. Like, you know, the grand, you know, Nick. There's so many of our friends who there's this whole side of snowboarding I feel like that nobody really dabbles in and that's Nick Russell's world and uh, this is Nick's word not my word but shroupanism shroupanism because alpinism is kind of the walking up the mountain and uh, that's like what people are into you go to Denali and most of the people are walking we're the only people basically snowboarding there last summer and uh, but that side of snowboarding the shroupanism is uh it's a whole other world man i'm not comfortable yet but i'm dabbling it's great question nick and is the septic really i, I, like, I have some things i, like I would have heard about that, that. i like kind of like <laughs> mm, that was for some wow factor for the bomb hole viewers it was we had a leech field problem okay we've kind of got this little dude nick is the funniest roommate to have but we kind of have this little spot in our front yard that's just like a poo it's about two by two feet. It's like a little poo 
from your septic tank. Yeah, like mud, it, it's mud been puddle? yeah, but it's been drying ever so slowly. I had to cut all the weeds around it to get it, you know, more sun, less shade. It's drying up. It's drying. I hope up. Nick's be joking about that because <laughs> I've been working hard panic. to get that to dry <laughs> out. You know, if your plumbing doesn't ever work, uh, Buds was telling me when he was younger he took a yard, uh, a backyard shit, right? I was not even that much younger. I was probably like his age, maybe. <laughs> Just every once in a while, if you're if someone if if you can't use the bathroom and yeah. you really gotta go after a night of drinking, <clears throat> T Bird did it like two years ago, I think. Yeah. I want to say, yeah. Squatting in the woods too is a you know, or I really like the snowmobile poops. Yes, yeah. snowmobile poops are great. You know, you go find your own zone, beautiful vista, one cheek on the on the running board. Is that how just, you run it? You put a, a do you put a I put a, a glove. Where I sit. A glove's a good call. One time, I, I Mikey Rentz sends me photos of his backcountry poos, <laughs> like the areas, because we 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 like that. And uh, I sent him one one time. I used my hat, and he was like, "Ooh, risky." That is a risky maneuver. You know. Yeah, it could it fall in. Yeah, the glove's more easy to clean yes. off. The hat is gonna it's gonna stick. I, while we're on this subject, <laughs> this is a this is an interesting. I don't know how it ties in, but it makes sense to me. Like, all right, you you are a dude that has done well for yourself. Marquee pro for Burton, Marquee pro for Mountain Dew, all these things. You probably got all this bisque saved away, but you got the beard. You look like a goddamn homeless person. <laughs> What's, what the hell is... What? I just joined a golf club, <laughs> and it is definitely like, who's that guy? Well, you know? Buds was talking yeah, about wanted, being profiled. Yeah, kinda. I wanted to ask you, because it's happened to me. Do you get profiled as like, yo, are you really supposed to be here? Or? Yeah, United. I think everybody's yeah. got this kind of story. Airlines, Delta, right? United. You walk up and they're just like, "Oh, sorry, check-ins over there." And you're like, "Oh, I'm, oh shoot! Like I thought this was the one K line." Oh yeah, no, I'm sorry. You are flex you, on them. Are right? you one K? And you're like, "Oh yeah, what, what made you? Oh, right. You got to flex on them right. hard when they do that." Cops. I Cops. had a in in. I was going to pick up my grandparents last year in Florida, and it was like midnight, and I literally had two hours to go sleep and then wake up, grab them, and fly them to my cousin's wedding. And I got pulled over, and they searched the whole car, ripped my bags apart, and then in the end, they were like, well, you got a warning for not stopping at that red light and then making your turn. And I was just like, wow, that was aggressive. Yeah, that's what they do. They for profile. looking like, you know, I yeah. look and, uh, well... That is what it is, you know. I think a lot of people deal with that on a much higher level, so. Yeah, I got um, kicked out of a hotel lobby once that I was staying in because they thought I wasn't supposed to be in there. Back when my beard was longer, you know. <laughs> it's harsh, though, man. You know, and I, uh, yeah, I only have a small taste of it. That shit's. Just wait till you, as you get a little bit older and it grays or, or something. or you I just, get a little more respect. Yeah. Oh, this guy's wise. No, they'll. <laughs> <laughs> you get a gray beard. <laughs> And kind of get some balding going. People are all of a sudden like, look at this guy's chill. Look at his <laughs> long beard. <laughs> this is another This is another thing that ties into this. Because it's like, dude, we'll just run through some accolades. You've been in TV commercials. You've had big contest wins. You've summited Denali. Ride big lines. You have did big jump tricks. Video parts. All this stuff. Your own movie, Peace Park. You got marquee sponsorship. And... You live this humble life. I know you got biscuits stacked away. What do you even do with these biscuits, too? We stack them. You just, you stack, just stack them. Stack you don't them. buy anything. I, I mean, I do. Yeah. You know, the Mercedes rig isn't cheap, and yeah. I got a house, you know. Um, I bought my house when I was 18, and that was the smartest thing I ever did. To all you youngins, if you can make it work. The same house? Don't, don't pay somebody else's mortgage. Pay your own, and, like... My mom was very, yeah, like right off the bat, she's like, you got some bisque here. <laughs> you know, the government will just take it from you if you don't spend it. True. So let's get you a crib. Where do you want to be? She, did she use those terms? By yeah, you? it was, I mean, you know, a little slightly different. My mom's pretty cool. She founded the word cheddar biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope. Um, yeah, no, I, I think. But it's the same house you've been in there since yep. you were 18. That's yep. awesome. Yep. Uh, so we, since then, you've just been stacking a mountain. I mean, I, I bought some biscuits. land here in ah. Utah. Um, I really like land. I mean, I'm obsessed with... Solid move. Like, these guys with the Freedom Frontier is just, so. like, the raddest. I, like, when, that, I, when I saw that, I was just like, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm trying to do. But uh, it's been a hard, hard... I'll tell you why I've just been stacking. For one, I have a hard time making commitments. 
just in general, I'm that kind of person. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I haven't found the perfect property, and I've been so busy that I'm not, like, tripping on having it because it's just going to be hard to get there. Mm-hmm. So I've been searching for the perfect property forever, stacking some biskies. You know, I do some stocks. I don't watch them. I, 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 I just put them, yeah. these guys, you know, they got guys who do that. You let the best kind of marinate. You, you ever swim around you, in it? You like got Scrooge a bit, McDuck you know. Or, <laughs> no? In the bis, yeah. in all the, you know, it would be cool. He fills a room with cash and <laughs> just swims around. That's what I would do if I coin. had that kind of biscuit. Back in the day, this never happens anymore, and shame on the snowboard industry for this. You used to get fucking cash, cash. man. You used to get cash when you left a contest. I left the U.S. Open one time with like twenty eight grand, handed it to my mom, Woo! and Woo! she was like, "Like, wow, whoa, you know." And they had to drive across Canada to get back to Michigan with it, and my mom was just like a little worried about that. But um, you used to get paid cash. Man, I remember Kev one time we were in uh, Japan, and he won the contest and won a car, so they gave you the money you won t- for the contest winning and then the money for the car so kev had like i don't know 40 50 grand or something like that Mm -hmm. kev would have some good stories for this show yeah he's got some great stories absolutely i remember pat moore talking about flying back from arctic challenge with either like a bunch of money or gold or something he had to go through (laughs) i don't remember what i never had that one i remember uh i was at a contest in whistler where Ludacris had like a suitcase of like 80k and gave it to like josh feliciano what? Like Sims and in, oh, when he was doing those back rodeos and winning the yeah. contest. Whoa! And uh, we went and hung with Ludacris, and he just had this big case of money that he was supposed to deliver to the winner. Yeah, I. The, they need the, to get that the going. Cash again. The cash was way cool yeah. to have to roll with cash, but um, you know, I I think you used to be able to make more money at contests too because there was like slope style, half pipe, big air, rail jam. You know, like, right? Wasn't that like, yeah. so you could like kind of clean up a little bit, you know, two grand here and get fifth place in that thing. And, and the way your guys' contracts are, are structured, like kind of when you win an event, does the, the sponsors, there's some type of incentive where they give you a bonus for first, second or third. Is that how it works? Or? It's different for everybody okay. nowadays. I mean, y- snowboard brands too are just more down, at least in my experience, more down to work with like what you want to do. Like, you know, let me, like, give me some project money so I can go, like, film and do what I really want to do. And the, the the contest side of it, awesome. You know, you know, but not everybody gets um, incentives on, on stuff okay. anymore. I think it's, too, it's, I think the other side of it is that snow, or the world um, of snowboarding has gotten so digital, it's just hard to keep track of shit. Like, you used to get paid for a shot in a magazine. You know, now snowboarders using something eight times or something, you know, so it's, and, uh, it's just hard to keep track of. So I think everybody's just like, here's your salary. And if you win a contest, good job. Well, we appreciate it. Before we, before we move <clears throat> off the subject of the bisque, love um, the bisque, <laughs> uh, I would love to talk about, I remember me and buds, uh, were talking about before the show, you did a Totino's pizza roll commercial, uh, which is incredible. We will insert in the show notes. Yes. Which I'd like to say, I think Dan Cass was a Totino's athlete. Oh, he was. Uh, once, too. Okay. So, Buds has a, know, it's a it, Mason first... Aguirre was on there with me. It's a coveted team. I'm, I'm back. Just in, saying. I'm back in the brand, dude. I still eat the pizza, personally. <laughs> it reminds me of, like, when I first moved out of my parents' house, I could only afford these dollar pizzas. It takes me back to that time of being, like, 17, well, that, 18, that was, young snowboarder, no money. And that was kind of the best part of, like, yeah, the cheddar bisque was dope, but they gave you a stack of coupons, and the gremlins oh, loved They those. just ate those things up. Ate them up. I, I had a stack of those in Tahoe. I think I gave a bunch to Nico. He took it to the gremlins' house. I think those kids were eating pizza rolls for The gremlins a year. were fueled by Totino's pizza Fueled rolls. by Totino's, which <laughs> tells you, you know, it is. It's a great product. It explains it's a good something, product. you know. Well, yeah. what about the bisque? Their hair looks like it grows at a massive rate. You can know? you give <laughs> us a little? Can you give us a little <laughs> bisque? <of> hair? <laughs> hair comments, incredible. It's, yeah, you know they grow them locks and beards and um. They're the, hairy the bunch. bisque on the Totinos. Yeah, t- uh, Totinos commercial. That's got to be good. So it was like a contract, you know, for like some time. 
I, I, <clears throat> my guess would be like 50, 60, maybe something in the 80 range at, if it was like a two year kind of thing or something. But you know, um, that was like when things started, like those things started to happen, you know, like I had a boost mobile thing at one, you know, like where back in the day, man, you would make so much money off fuel TV, first of all. So really? like you could have a contract with anybody, Totino's included, where you would get incentives. And that's just where things have changed. Like, you know, and fuel TV made me so much money that it is h- hard to even imagine what it what it what it brought. And how did that work? It was like... I would always cap out my incentives mostly because uh, of Fuel TV, you know? Because there like, was so much footage of you. Yeah, and just so much. They had the Daily Habit. They had, like, showed contests. And, and it was on... It was a channel that yeah. was 24 hours of action sports. It was great. I used to love Fuel oh, TV. Oh, I love... I grew up watching. And, and, and so that... So you were just maxing incentives. Well, and I think brands were more apt because it... There was a channel dedicated to that where people, they could get to that consumer or that avenue of person, you know, like action sports people. Totino's wants to be like, you know, that's the kind of people that's eating their product, I guess, is what they're thinking. Yeah. Gremlins are chomping. They were kind of right, yeah. but, you know, yeah. and the way the Stone's comments, running it. And yeah. still, there's and still the a Grammys couple pizzas in my freezer right now. <laughs> I'm not I like joking. to spread a little <laughs> broccoli or something to you know, make it a little more. When I go for it, it's just like, fuck yeah, it. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay, okay. <laughs> Wife and I will split a one. A little bell pep on there, a little onion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goes a long cheese. way. Yeah, no, it would go a long way. So then, the, oh, just to keep on that subject for one second, the contracts, like the way they're structured would be like zero to 30 seconds with a logo. 100%. You get like, so that's how my monster contract. Yeah. Right? So it's like, yeah, you if, know. There's a, if there's a board behind your head and there's a Tatino's and you're doing an interview... So, like, zero to 30 seconds, 30 to a minute, and, 30. And, and, you know, you have an agent who's, who's doing that. And But my my mom, um, she used to just, in the beginning, like, when we didn't really have, like, uh, I, I worked with Sue Izzo for a long time. Oh, nice. I know Shout Sue. Shout Sue. We'll give her a Sue's oh, dope. Shout out to Sue. This. And, um, you know, so they kind of, like, my I would say basically my mom didn't really trust that everyone was seeing everything. So she would kind of dig around and find all that stuff, put it, in you know, front of count them. the timing and, and just send it to my agent and be like, Hey, here's what I found for Danny getting paid. And that was sweet. Cause my mom would catch some, catch some stuff. And, but fuel was like, that was an insane way to make some money mm-hmm. back in the day. And that's how you made the bisque. And that's how those companies I think were more apt to that. You know, now, uh, it's a little bit different. It's all about followers and views on photos and posting. And back in the day, you didn't have to post shit. It's it nice. awesome. So there's yeah. no fuel anymore? Not that I know of. Yeah. No. It's nothing like that? It's all social media. RSN? You remember oh, that? Yeah. Or what, what's the one on the, the East Coast? Network. Yeah, it was like yeah. on the TV at Mount Snow. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Resort. Glenn Plake. A yeah. lot of Glenn Plake. <laughs> it's probably still going. And I'll going. tell you what. It's probably still going. Shout out to Glenn Plake. That guy's the man. He cr- he is a crusher in the mountains. In the Eastern Sierra, he's in the Shraupenism world, but he's more ski. That guy crushes. Really? And we saw him one time in uh, Bridgeport, and it was awesome. Me and Nick were like, no way. Yo, yo. We were just coming out of the mountains, and we were like, dude, it's Glenn Plake. So he's out there still he's doing still, this. Oh, he Shrapen, crushes. Shrapenism. Mohawk? He's got the Moe. <laughs> he still runs a Mohawk he's out. still got like a long Moe. Really long. <laughs> like the term Moe. Moe. <laughs> All right. Hey, before we get too far along, we got a, we almost skipped oh, yeah. a great part of the show. Um, Fan favorite. It's called Name That Video Part. Here we go. Yes. And this is presented by the Do Tour, an event we've been talking about. Great event. You can always see Danny there doing his thing. It's a great event, and it's kind of stepping up. I felt like last year it was really fancy. You guys had like a VIP zone on top of the lodge. Was that? Oh, yeah. That was crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. How's, what's your confidence level, 0 to 10? I'll say I listen to the show a lot. Big fan, first of all. You know, just to let you guys know. Thank Dope. you. freaking love this thing. Um, I get like 50% of them, I think, okay. when I'm listening. Okay. So I'm, I'm a little worried, though. I let's feel see, like you're right. going <laughs> to... Let's see how he does. Here we go. Oh, David Benedict. No. 
Same movie. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, oh. Same movie. Oh, what the is other, that? Hold on. You, you triggered it, it too quick. Hold on. Let me just hit it again. Is it Travis Parker? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? That's correct. David Benedict's in it. He's in it. It's, <laughs> and it's, you know what? You still get yourself a prize. Pack. Yeah. Woo! We got a bunch of bomb hole merch in there. We got a shirt. We got a sticker. Yo. We got a mug. We actually have some new air fresheners with Stony Buds' face on it. I haven't even seen those yet. Yeah. Dude, this is... <laughs> This is sick, and I'll tell you what I—I uh, I hear you guys giving out coolers on the show. This is the dopest style cooler you could be giving out on the show. Shout to Igloo for Dude, making that for us. It's lightweight. You put your lunch in it. You carry it into your job site. I saw guys up at the Natural Selection carrying one just like this, and really? I was like, I love that. <laughs> yeah, you can't carry a Yeti up there. No, just a classic. shit weighs yeah, like too big. Also, that thing's probably affordably priced as opposed. You know, some of the other ones. Yeah, yours you is like... Refinance your house to get a goddamn Yeti cooler. And and you need to work out. They're big. And they're <laughs> they're heavy. heavy. Yeah. They're heavy. You better be pumping iron if you're going to be carrying one of those around. <laughs> okay, we're still in name that video oh, yeah, part. Right. This is song number two. Danny, make sure you don't answer this even if you know it. Oh, um, good. And okay. if you do know it, for the listeners and viewers, comment on the picture of Danny on our Instagram First one to get it gets themselves. What do they get, buds? Prize pack. They get a little prize pack. Here we go. That's it. That's all they get? That's all they get. It's rough, man. They're good. Thank you guys for playing Name That Video part. For the record. I don't know. Song sounded familiar. I couldn't I, name I, that I, video part. Yeah, I was, was going to say for the record. I don't know that I got that one. That was a quick hit. Yeah, we... Uh, we got to make it hard for these guys. No, yeah. you do. Because they're on top of it. Yeah, I don't even yeah. know how they do it so a, well. A lot of students of the game, you could say. Because that's kind of like, I almost think of, you see like LeBron and Kobe, they watch all the footage of themselves like post game. I think sometimes like watching snowboard videos is the same shit. True. Oh, yeah. Are you a student of the game? I'm a student of the game. Sorry to interrupt. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a like. Everything, too. Like, you know, when we were at the U.S. Open this year, Alex Andrews was just, he's the froth captain. Yes. So he's the guy putting videos on every morning for the riders. Well, which he's I, the one who gets you guys juiced. He is. It, it's actually sometimes a little too much out there in the backcountry. <laughs> too much but juice. Too much juice. <laughs> you put down, like, a kind of a soggy method, and he, you just thought you blew, you blew his mind. <laughs> and he's like, that shit was psycho! But he's the one putting on all the video <laughs> parts and videos at the U.S. Open. And I was noticing that, like, I'm, I'm forgetting about, like, that era. Like, the after bang. I, don't, I haven't been watching that much. I feel like that um, there's a certain side of snowboarding that really loves that Oregon. And that's like some yeah. Oregon videos. You know, um, but I'm guilty of being, a, when I was a kid, I would watch video parts and get to Big Mountain stuff and next or fast forward depending if we were VHS or not. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel bad about that nowadays because now I look at those parts. I respect them I'm more. a student of that game a little bit more right now. Like, I like watching old stuff, and I like watching a lot of new stuff because I like to just try and stay current, too. And the tricks are moving so f- – like, I mean that not the progression's moving so fast, but the actual movement. So I, it's hard to count and hard to know what people are doing, and I, I got to watch – Contemporary boarding because uh, it's happening fast. You watch street stuff? I watch street stuff. I like some Forrest Bailey. I like some, I like, yeah, I love street stuff. I would like to go on a street trip more to just, I want to know, I like to hang out. And I want (laughs) to, like, be the guy who, on the lip and. um, What is that? It's the torch. It's the torch. Oh, the torch. You know? Oh, you want to run the torch. Yeah, I, I just want to be a part of the whole scene. I want to talk yeah. to cops. I want to be like, hey, man, give them like a couple tries. You know, like I I never have lived that in snowboarding. Dude. It's a whole side of snowboarding that you, you, are, you both us, are very familiar with. And uh, I, I'm going to – I would like to do this movie one day where I put myself in all these situations of snowboarding that I haven't got to be in yet. Um, and I would love to go hang with Ethan Dice. I just feel like mm-hmm. that kid – He's one of my faves. Uh, and Keegan, and I spent so much time with Keegan Vallega. Holy crap. We didn't even talk about him in the Burton days. He was friend's crew, for sure. Really? And uh, Keegan, man, he, he, he needs to snowboard more. Snowboard more, Keegan. Yeah, he's, please. he is talented. Yeah. 
So you want to get out there, run the torch. Yeah, I kind of want to get on one of those trips. Chop we, it up We with call the, the torch Flame Boy, just so you know. Yeah. Flame Boy? Yeah, that's the name of the torch. Oh, I love that. A little Spitfire reference. Yeah. Uh, uh, or no, is Wet that? Willy. Wet Willy Wet. World Industries. World uh, Industries. That's what it is. Uh, but if you think about it, you've done, the, you've done uh, <laughs> you know, split boarded up, whatever you call it, Alpine touring up Bolivia. Shalpinism. All these. Shalpinism. You've done the half pipe X Games contest at night. You've done the slope style. You've done the Peace Park. You've let's done get all the streets. You've been let's to AK. Get the, let's get like an X Games real snow going. Let's yeah, get what do you think? What about X like Games real snow? 162 razor sharp edges, forward lean, just cab twoing like a kink rail. I got one cab two this summer at Hood. We can maybe get you guys the file. Let's Dope. talk about the cab two because you're saying sketch. Shit at the cab. Sketch. So, Zach Nigro. <laughs> You know, and he could have gotten me hurt, okay? <laughs> but he put some 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 bisque up. You oh, know, when you put bisque up in front of me, I might go for it. Okay. I don't like dive for what the. What are we bisque, talking? Like a hundred bucks? Yeah, yeah, I think it was. I think it was maybe two hundred bucks or something bucks. like that. And he was like, because I had the one sixty two on, Ooh. and he was, and I was like, I want cab two this thing, and he's like, I give you two hundred bucks, and then I got like four or five tries at it, and he, and he was like, I was getting kind of close, and I, he nervous. was kind of like, you get ten more tries. And I was like, bullshit, man. Like, you can't, can't throw that yeah. out. He's like, we'll be here all night. I'm like, so what? You didn't throw that in. Yeah, yeah you got to stipulate the contract. Yeah, you can't throw that in. Then about three tries later, I had a catch-up, and that really scared me. Um, we could probably find that clip, too. Um, <laughs> I got it, kind of. I didn't get it exactly. It was supposed to be back to regular. I got one fakey. I'm kind of counting it. Yeah, let's count it. Let's count Here's it. Here's a C rail. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, I feel wow. Like that's kind of badass. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> that's dope. It wasn't a straight rail, you know? I mean, a little harder. Well, let's talk about uh, so the Burton movie, One World. Yeah. We were at the cabin talking last night uh, or two nights ago. Really, really funny how you were explaining, you know, basically coming off of a split boarding trip. You jumped right into hitting cheese wedges well, with the boys. Well, just coming off contests, oh, that's really. What it was. Oh yeah. But yeah, I, you know, I think we did. I went to, uh, I went home, did some splitting with like Nick and Jer. I think it was Jer's birthday, maybe, and and then I went to do tour, and then we went straight to Jackson, and uh, started filming for the movie, and that was really my first trip filming for the movie this year, kind of first and only in a way. Um, but we got there, man, and. Snow was killer. Stability's just primo, so I'm loving it. We're going snowmobiling. We're looking at stuff, and the first thing we find is kind of this epic-looking upper section, and maybe we should, like, push further and see if we could, like, go ride some lines, but then the boys just looked down, and there were these nice landings. And we went to Cheese Wedgeville, and it is so hard to hit a cheese wedge with Mark McMorris, Brock Crouch, and Red Gerard. I'm really out of my league in that world. Those are it, the best in the world. Yeah, it, it, it was like, it was, and and everybody's regular. You know that sucks when you show up to a, a backcountry kicker and you're all the same stance. That trick selection goes down. Then you throw in the three of the world's best jumpers right now, and your trick selection actually starts to get a little easier. Front threes kind of available. Back threes <laughs> kind of available. Take us through the switch take back us. fives available because those guys are just like they're thinking big. We're at the top and they're like, well, you know, Brock's like. Yo, Dan, what are you thinking? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, man. What are you thinking? They're like, I'm going to go, like, back dub 10. I'm just like, damn. All right. That's <laughs> All right, Brock's coming for it. Mark, what are you doing? Mark's like, oh, I'll start with, like, a uh, switch back nine and then probably take your 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, damn. All right. God, you guys are all going for video part of the year, clearly. Um, and then Red just dumps some weird, like, epic trick off the bat. And then just, dude, this, he got a amazing, sw oh, I don't want to give too much away, but Red's got some epic switch backside shit in Jackson. And but hitting a jump with those guys is just challenging. So I got to kind of, you know, I got to kind of step up, I felt like. And it's the end of the day, we built this kicker. We had already hit one earlier that day. The boys were like, oh, this doesn't look that good. I'm going to go, like, I'm going to start with back set. Every trick I was thinking, like, oh, this is a good back seven job. Yeah, I'm going to do back seven. I'm like, oh, damn. And I was like, Mark, you know, Brock ended up taking his back seven, like double back ten. Mark did some epic front side sev kind of trick. And then so I was just like, fuck okay, it. I'm going. 
I'm going to go back rodeo. And they're like, oh, sick, yes, yeah, good back rodeo trick. But somebody kind of like snagged back rodeo before I could really get it. So I just was like, fuck it. Double back rodeo 10. Never tried one in my life. Damn. Horrible jump for it. Like kind of a far traveling jump. Um, I looked a like a jump, right? Yeah, you want a nice poppy <laughs> jump with a nice steep landing. This was the exact opposite of what you want. It was like a lip cut out of a hillside to then like this kind of angled landing with a nice wind lip landing right in here really small but nice if you could catch that i wasn't really catching it that well and uh, <laughs> i just beat myself up for like 10 tries on a double back rodeo 10 i tried to get all john jay get on it, it. no what no. was no, no. What did mark, you were saying the other night what mark was telling you and it had me cracking up yeah like mark was like oh my god dude like the first try he was like were you trying that and i was like yeah i was kind of like fuck it you guys just chucking so i need to get some tricks and he's like you you got it oh, and i'm like okay Right on it, and AA's there just like, dude, that thing is dummy! <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you're going fucking dummy, dude! And you're just like, oh, God. So then I, I, you know, I give it a few more tries, and Mark's like, dude, you got it, dude, but just uh, slow it down. <laughs> you know, it looked like, I think, in hindsight, I feel really stupid for trying it because I probably could have gotten a few nice tricks on that and I just wasted my time with Your a whole day. double back rodeo 10. But you couldn't slow down. It was like you drop in, you go as fast as you can, and like kind of a neck, kind of a neck. <laughs> just shot out of a can. A shot out double. of a can, wet cat, shot out of a can, and just spinning through the air aimlessly. Uh, until my board hit. No, I had a couple of close attempts. And these guys but... were getting you pretty hyped, it sounds like. Oh, How hell yeah. How are you going to stop, right? Oh, it's the classic, like, you got this, dude. <laughs> and you're like, I think I'm six tries past it. Like, I... <laughs> Like I feel like a deer that just got hit by a car, like Dude. flying through the air. <laughs> you know, and your goggles, you got to re-clean them every time. Chuck a new lens in. You got multiple lens drying on trees at the drop-in. You're just like, okay, that one looks, ew, that one's bad. You know, like it. Uh, yeah, it was fun filming with those guys, but <laughs> challenging. You know, like I think maybe I would have, uh, I maybe would have been more productive in the in the BC crew, but. Uh, it was so fun, man. I love riding with those guys. We hit pretty much all kickers. It was great. Going to be a sick movie or what? It's got to be, right? Yeah. I, I mean, mean with that crew. The, let's talk about the roster. The roster yeah, is crazy. Okay, okay. Let's, let's try because yeah. it's going to be – I would imagine it's up in the 40 count of riders oh, or really? something. Oh, really? I don't it's know. Like I mean, you got Mark and myself and Red and Mikey and Mikkel and Ben and Sollers, Terrier. We're not even into the women at all yet. Oh, damn. You know, um, but it's, it's I, what I do know is it's not really part-based. It's Much. more, we, we all spent, different groups of us spent a good time, good amount of time together, you know. It's more location. More location-based, and I think the BC crew killed it. I mean, how could you not? like yeah. With Mikey Rents? With Mikey and Mickle knowing that place so well now and really Those getting. Guys, I'm going to hit them with a little air horn real quick. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mikey Rents. Might be the longest Burton rider other than Terrier. I think that's a stat. Damn. Like 20-some years for sure. That's what impressive. 23, I think. Yeah. Um, no, those guys just know that zone so well, and they know how to push further to stuff that maybe nobody's riding. And I think Ferg fits in really well with that crew, you know. Good old boys out on their snowmobiles. They get back, crush like six beers, go to bed and wake, it up, wake up and do it again. Or whatever, you know, those guys. Is there any uh, rail people in the movie, too? Oh, yeah. Ethan, oh, Ethan, Luke Winkleman, uh, Marie. Niels, Marie. Marie Thompson. Yeah, so and then the girls, we got who I'm so hyped on that chick. We were with her yeah, in, she's, in she's Hood. Rad. Hands down, one of the raddest snowboarder gals I know. Like, she is just, she's not afraid of rails. Also like, a mom. Mom, Dude, yeah, which is even more bad. Mom, boss, boss, mom. How boss many moms mom. you know out there hitting down bars in the streets? You know, yeah, not I, I none. Know. Yeah, none. None. Yeah. Yeah, none. None. Um, none on no. that level. And and she's just like you can see that like she's got such a comfort on rails like that. I'm like she's going into it and then she jump and I'm just like whoa like I'm not gonna step to that even in the Mount Hood Timberline Park. Um, so. She's got a, a high level of talent, it looks like, and I'm stoked to, to ride with her a little bit more. But uh, Anna Gasser, 
Jayu, my homie, um, great pipe rider. I think she's in it. Kelly, I think, has got some shots. Um, maybe Julia Marino might have cool. some, some shots in there. There's so many people. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be Circling. quite the production. It's going to be stacked. Um, I hope it's stacked. It'll be incredible. And this brings me back to when you're talking about these jump sessions. I'm curious, like, let's talk about Mark Mick for a second yeah. on the jumps. What's the, what's the percentage of lands? Oh, man, they're tries? so consistent. Like all those guys. <laughs> it, it's rare if they don't walk away with the tricks they were trying. Yeah. It's really rare. As to where, like, maybe it's more rare that I come away with a few. Uh, I'm sure you land plenty dude the jumps they they it's it's hard to hit jumps with those guys you know you don't want to lap tricks on people Mm -hmm. and overlap on tricks but um McMorris man and Red and Brock they just ride you know like I think you were saying this the other day when he takes off like it's so straight just the technique that those guys have when they take it to the backcountry it's only that more effective you know back in the day a lot of carving off takeoffs, oh, like yeah. pre-spinning and shit like that. And not those guys, man. Like, it's so dialed because they ride in contests where the lips just get super sugary and stuff and skiers are in there. And so they're really used – they're really good at going dead straight off jumps. And, man, the amount of lands they get, it's incredible. And just to see, like – like, I was just in Hood with Mark. Just to see how he does it, he's just like – Switch back five, get like a steezy. Can you get the Mark voice, actually, though? <laughs> Your Brock voice was incredible, too, by the way. But Mark, like, steps it up. Like, he does, like, steezy switch back five, super dope, and then it's, like, switch back nine, switch back double twelve. Yeah. And, then, like, you know, he, like, gets his steezy move in there for the camera and hood, like, first go, and then boom, 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 and then next one. And That's what I think that you see, you know, sometimes people in our world – player hate on the 1080s and the 1440s Dude, and all this stuff. Can't. And then you look at, like, it's like, have you ever seen Mark do a switchback five? It did the way he, like, pops and then, like, dumps it late. It's, like, the sickest thing ever. Yeah, yeah if like, he couldn't, I mean, if he couldn't, I mean, Mark's one of those riders who's, I think, well-respected in the sport. Of course. But, you know, those tricks in general, they are just harder. I know it's whacker. I know it takes more energy. It's not tricks that I want to do, but... Those tricks are harder, and that's why those kids do them, because it's a contest, and they're doing better run than the next guy, and that happens to be tricks. Like, if, we, if we're bummed on that, like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You know, it just doesn't, like, it's just, like, you know, stuff in the streets, you know, I feel like it's, it's all over the map, too. I wouldn't be bummed if somebody started doing, like, when they go back three on the rail, like don't spin on the rails. Like, yeah, it's no, hard. That shit's gnarly. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. That's just the way it is. Yeah, you know, but to each their own. You yeah, know? I, 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 I'm excited to go on a street trip too because I just like want to. I wanted like one try at like a front board or down you, flat. Down. You gonna rock forward lean and razor sharps on the street trip? What's the deal with forward lean? Not good on rails. Uh, personally. If you're, you know, for the listeners that don't know what forward lean is, it's on your bindings. Because some people, I don't know, like, I don't know if it's, Some people pull their bindings out the box and, uh, and roll, So basically, sure. like, it puts your... <laughs> He's done with now. It cranks your, <laughs> your, your... Yeah, owner of Tech 9 bindings yeah. would know. He would um, know. And it, like, basically, when you crank your high back like this, it makes your knees bend and you're able to... It helps with backside airs in the pipe, for sure. It and just gives you a little more to push against, you know? It, more well, like board control back response, and forth. Response. More responsive. A lot know? of bindings ship with a little bit of forward lean just so the layman. Just to steer them in the right yeah, direction. Yeah, steer them in the right direction, like For three sure. to six degrees or whatever. But a, lo- a lot of rail guys pull the little uh, forward Screws lean clickers out. out of their bindings completely and don't even use them. Because, like, front boarding a kink, for example, like, you don't want your heels to be digging in. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like so, makes sense. So you're, you want your board to be flat on the rail and where forward that. lean kind of makes your heels sit lower, is in my thought. Can you so think I, of any jibbers that run forward I know forward Steve, lean? Stevens pulls it out. Uh, jibbers that would run it? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I run, like, on, on a, my park board, I run it. On my street board, I don't run it. Got so it. Interesting. Yeah. Soft boots? I ride these guys, these 32 Team 3s behind me. Uh, they're stiff doggers. So... Anyway, yeah, I think that's more subject. a rider preference. Not about the soft this is, or the stiffness. But in the streets, you go with the stiffies? My ankles have been just shot, destroyed. I just got an MRI recently. Thought I had some tendonitis going on. I do. 
<laughs> and uh, and the guy was like, you know, like good news, bad news. Like you don't have a tear in anything, but your ankle's just like beat up. What do you? What's your <laughs> setup like for riding these pipes contests and stuff? Man, I'm always tinkering, trying to mess with stuff, and I've been running the super thin beds, uh, which I think is good in the pipe for response. Uh, it's bad for flat landings, um, but I like everything light. Right now, I used to like like some density to my board and some weight, and now I'm like way more into the light shit right now. I want to be. What about flex, like stiff dog? Stiff in the pipe. So, I ride different stuff all the time. Like I like, you know, there's a couple couple boards I ride in the family tree line. I ride deep thinker and free thinker, and then for contests, I ride a hawk and air that's like got some newer materials in it than like an old hawk and air. So I ride like a stiff, stiff Terrier. It's a 59. I ride that in the pipe. But what you want in the pipe is kind of minimal side cut and not a super wide board, in my opinion. So you can get on edge easy. Super easy to get on it. Well, the side cut, the no side cut makes it a little harder to get on edge. But once you're on edge, it just stays. So like heel side is like, like, uh, think like border cross boards, minimal side cut. Stay on edge when you get them on edge, but they're a little harder to get on edge. Don't you have? I got a Patreon question from this guy. You know what Patreon is? Another people that support the podcast. Patreon, rad. yeah. Respect shouts to all yeah, the Patreons. Shouts. We have uh, <laughs> Yummy Snacks is their their uh, name, <laughs> but they want to know uh, exactly what your stance and angles are on your setup. Oh man, it changes. Depends who really? I'm riding with. Mine's been the same forever since I started snowboarding. It's just it's like, crazy. Um, so in the half pipe, I go, lately I've been a, a little more directional in the pipe, but usually back in the day when I was like really riding pipe was like nine and negative nine, just like the same, just because I would like when we were going switch, you had the sta- same stance. And, but if I'm not going to ride like pal, I'll probably kick it forward a little bit, you know, more like, Posy posy style. It makes sense to change and, it. And take a little forward lean off. And uh, if I were riding rails, it sounds like I'm fucking chucking the high backs <laughs> away. He also wanted to know how stock your, your gear is. Or do you have, like, special stuff made for you by Burton? The Terrier boards I ride in the contest are about. special. Yeah. They're special. But it's a hawk and air. Yeah. So go find yourself a hawk and air, and that's, that's what I ride in the pipe. The bindings, Burton doesn't love that I tear apart my bindings and put different pieces together, but I've had bindings from Burton for so long that there's so many rad pieces that I have that I love, and I like right now the carbon high backs. I cut all my material off of the heels, like the heel strap, um, or like the ankle strap, and I cut it off the toe strap and get them super lightweight, and they look kind of, kind of tough. Those yeah, I, I modded up dope. myself, though, yeah. a lot of the stuff. Burton does make me some special boards sometimes, more when we're, like, testing, though, product testing. Um, I try to keep it pretty stock, you know? When you when you spend that time dialing in your setup and tweaking, I feel like it gives you a little bit more love for your board and your setup. Too. Oh, it's yeah. It's like a little bit of a bond there. You ever yeah. Feel that way? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's good to put some energy into your board. It's good to wax it, good to, like, Maybe touch the edges a little here and there with some stuff. Just really get to know your board. But McDermott puts so much love into our boards. So one thing we do, you know, that so the list of the Patreons know, is I send my boards to Ryan first. They don't even, they go, Burton sends them to Ryan. He puts like 10 or 12 rounds of wax into them, of like a hot box. Damn. And so, because, you know, boards just love wax. They just get dry, right? So the mm-hmm. more wax you can put into your base right off the bat, the faster it'll be right off the bat. Uh, and then he puts structure on it. And, you know, so if you're looking to, like, update your board and you are want to be faster, you want to be um, more, have the snow just moving better through your base, get, get a little grind, take it to your local shop and get it, like, get a little tune-up and, like, before get it you in, even ride it. Yeah, and get it in there often even, too, because they just get so beat up. You know, there's so much, you like, dry out. depending on what you ride, too, if you're on rails and stuff like that, but you're hitting jumps and stuff, too, in the park, like, 
there's there's ways to for them to shape your board up for that. And Does he mount your board up and everything too? No. Okay. Uh, he know. Yeah, at a yeah. contest, he at takes contest. everything off. He marks where it is. Yep. Because my stuff kind of always changes a little bit, but and then just dials this it is in. The U.S. team wax tech. No, right. this is Ryan. Ryan's like he's, he's all he's for he's ever, a lot of people. Private. Private. Okay. He's private. He doesn't. He's from Massachusetts. He's a citizen though. of the world. He's yeah. not dedicated to any country. Um. No, he he uh, he helps Mark. He helps like all the birds. Stale, I seen him stand his yeah. hand his boards, or Jamie will hand him his boards at the end of the contest. I don't mean to be like biased, but I am with him. But all the best riders use him. Yeah, Scotty James. I mean, Mark McMorris, Stale, all the people who are winning seem to use him. And that's the thing in a contest that can make or break clearing the jump or going two feet bigger in the pipe. Your wax is huge. You know, that's I'd say when when he really comes in handy is when shit hits the fan at a contest and you got like a broken board and you need your other board and it needs to be all prepped and and he's got it all ready there. He's got screwdriver, whatever you need, or you break a buckle or whatever. Like having that, having the him up there is just amazing. And um, you know, I mean, when it really matters in the half pipe, anyway, is when you have those storm days that you got to have a contest and it's dumping and you happen to have the sick wax tech who's like, we're going to put some psycho shit on your base. But Fist just banned fluoros, I heard. Or he, uh, yeah. Floral carbons. Yeah, so you, you, they'll test boards. And this is like, why? I why, think yeah, I read why? this properly. Because it's so bad. I mean, it's just, oh, it's uh, bad for I the think environment. it's an environment move. Oh, okay. Uh, maybe. Maybe. That would be weird for Fist. But um, I, I swear Ryan just sent me an email that was like, uh, fluoros are banned, so all the boards you used to have, you probably need to get new boards if you're going to do a fist contest because they're going to test them. And they'll find, the, find it in there. That's crazy. And boot you're, you out of the contest. You can't dope your board either. No doping. No doping your board. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> okay, no board doping. Well, you know what we have that Ridiculous. I almost skipped over is we have a, a guest question. Oh, that's right. From Sparky. Oh, gosh. A.K. Mark Mick. Um, oh, coming at you. So, are you ready to go? Yeah, hey, let's do this. Mark McMorris here at San Francisco Airport. Mask on. Danny Davis, quick question. You came to Saskatchewan twice. How'd the second time go? How was the flight in versus the flight out? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark, for that great question. Wow, he was, like, really soft talking in the he airport. He had a mask on. Oh, is that what was going on? Yeah, he did say that. Great question, Mark. So I think what he's referring to is uh, Regina, Regina, Saskatchewan is where. (laughs) Regina. I'm not being. uh, I'm not being vulgar um, or talk. Yeah, Uh, it. It. it, He's from Regina, and it's hard to get there. And from Truckee, you got to fly like Reno, Seattle, Seattle, Vancouver, Vancouver, Regina. And so on the way there last year, Mark got us a private jet to. PJ. So I only had to go Reno, Seattle, Seattle van. And then I got to get on the PJ. Still sounds like a pain in the ass. It was still kind of, but it was <laughs> sick because we're on the PJ. Yeah, the PJ made the, it all worth it. And then I left early. Uh, because of one reason or another, and uh, I had to just, you know, the, the, the like, kind of a hungover, like, uh, travel back for hours and hours and hours. And I think that's what he's referring to. It's just, we, we had, a, you know, a softball tourney. So I go there for his softball tourney. It's a great time. Luke Matrani came and played a show. Jack came. Lego came. We play softball all day with a bunch of different teams, and uh, we're raising money for – kids who need money for sports in Canada, um, underprivileged, underprivileged kids. And, uh, and, you know, you have a party that night and everybody has a good time. And then uh, they were going to the lake to go do water sports and I was going to the airport and Mark was just like, you're an idiot. We got the jet <laughs> tomorrow. Like, what are you doing leaving early? It was one day. Yeah, I just needed to get out of there quicker. Yeah. You know, you got the lady back home, you know. Um, Kids ABU all banged up. Yeah, I was a little banged up. You know, <laughs> hanging out in Canada. <laughs> you know, maybe the beer's a little heavier up there. I don't know. It is. It's stronger. Okay, good. That's my um, that's my alibi. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I got 
kind of want to dive into some other stuff because you've been on Burton for fuck since forever, you know, and um, yeah, the stuff that happened. Obviously, Jake Burton passed away, Ooh. and yeah, that must have been that must have been tough. Like, what was his role in your life, and how how was that whole situation? It's just like it was kind of crazy because. Uh, from the minute I was on Burton, and I think at the minute anybody gets on Burton and they meet Jake, he's just such a real dude all the time. Like, he's genuinely wants to know how you're doing or what, you know, no matter who you are, if you're a team rider or if you're just someone he met. Um, just a super genuine guy. And just the, he just gave me so many good times. Not only gave me like a real opportunity to do something with my snowboarding, but uh, to just like all the, Celtics games I went to with him like and like just stuff like that that you just you just like uh that was like his thing he just wanted to stoke everyone out all the time and so if you were with him he just wanted to wow you or like stoke you out with something or um and that was like really something that I got from him was just like really going above and beyond for people to make sure they're comfortable everybody you good you good you good you know, um, but my my relationship with him was like when we were together, we'd have a blast. And sometimes it was Burton related and sometimes we were, you know, went to Mexico with his family and hung with the boys and surfing all day. You know, um, we had so much fun. And I think the the gnarliest part for me and just like our team is that uh Product wise, that guy was just like so on it, constantly trying the product, constantly thinking of how to change and how to evolve his product, never happy with just the way it was, always pushing for that next level. And the reason that we have the gear we have at Burton is because he's that that constant push of uh, just creating, man, that guy. And, and I feel like that's one thing I got from him, too, that I'll always try to achieve is just never stopping on the on the progression of whatever it is you know um, always getting better always getting better always rethinking things even in like your kitchen you're like this shit doesn't work right you know and like um let's fix this let's make this better like that 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 kind of mentality and oh yeah man just a great human and and uh i think we we all are pretty lucky because uh, we have so much reminders of them, but that's always hard too. Like you just constantly see stuff. Um, people with signatures, whatever. Someone just sent me something uh, like a photo of me that Jake signed in some place in New Zealand. And I was, oh man, like you always just, but he's always like, that's kind of rad too. He's always kind of around, which is pretty, pretty crazy. To follow up with that, losing Jake was like a huge impact on everybody in the snowboard community you know, super heavy. And then with you, with Kevin Pierce, with everything he went through, and then you had an accent, like, I feel like you've been around some heavy, heavy stuff, like people close to you and mm -hmm. even yourself. Do you think some of that stuff made you rethink your perspective on stuff, like seeing that stuff go down? I think when Kev got hurt, you know, um, I do remember just being like, whoa, is this shit really worth it? Like, that guy, like my friends, like, might be dead, you know? Uh, that was a trip. And, you know, I, I think that Kev's passion to get back to snowboarding was what made me realize, like, okay, this is cool. We can keep we, – we should, I should keep, keep going, you know. Like, he wanted to snowboard again from, like, the minute he could even realize that he uh, was a snowboarder, you know. Um, but, yeah, I remember, like, right when that happened, I was so mad at snowboarding because it just, like, really, really took one of my – dearest things in my life at that moment was my buddy Kev, you know? Um, and it maybe made me like, just rethink when I'm in those moments of like, not wanting to do tricks. I don't even fucking do it. You know, uh, the pipe sucks sometimes the conditions suck sometimes. And, uh, something I've been learning over the f last few years from, um, from buff um, from John Buffery, uh, is just like risk assessment stuff, you know, and 
You know, it's 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 definitely something that people need to learn in the mountains and in just in life and stuff too. Is just like assessing the risk that you're about. You know, quickly, not like I'm gonna bust out your notepad or anything, but <laughs> like you know, just like okay, is this trick gonna like change my life and like catapult me to this success that is unreal that I'm really trying to do or um or can we come back to this another day and and when we're more feeling more confident and and uh the conditions are better or whatever you know like um I think risk assessment happens all the time in the mountains with like avalanche conditions and all that stuff you're like okay this line pops this is going to be a sick line um but where am I going to go and how, where's my outs and like, what's, what's this line really worth to, to me or, you know, whatever. So I think, um, that was one thing, you know, with Kev getting hurt, that was just like risk assessment. It was totally the thing. And, um, and where to push my snowboarding, you know, like, was it more flips and more spins that I really want to do? Or was it like, let's expand some switch shit. Let's expand some backside spinning shit. Let's get a good McTwist. It took me years to get a good McTwist. Um, so I think it, it definitely changed my perspective, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Yeah. And then, then even, you know, going trick wise too, it's like everybody's doing, you know, front 12 doubles and then you just do the sickest thing that nobody's done, like a fakie method. Where the hell did you come <laughs> up with the with pop tart method, whatever think, that's called? I think that was a, uh, you know what that was? I, me and Blotto have this thing where we like send each other tricks that I want to try in the pipe. Cause I think everybody's trying to, uh, keep me in the half pipe. Like, they're like, please, <laughs> please, like, don't get over the contest, you know? Like, Blotto like, will send you <laughs> tricks you should try? Yeah, and Sick. people will, too. And you know who's another one? Deadlung. And I'm pretty sure Deadlung sent me that trick. He did it at Snowbird, and uh, he was like, hey, like, this is a cool trick. You should do this in the pipe. And he did it, like, on some, like, side hit thing on, really? uh, on the bird at the bird. And he always he sends me some tricks too, and uh, he'll just like, DM you. Or? Yeah, and like there's multiple, but my uh, my my agent uh, currently uh, Ninja. Oh, sick. Yeah, Ninja too will send some stuff, and then Blotto sent me the other day a shot of Ninja doing some half pipe trick. It was super wow. sick. I don't know the video like, that you it was. Try this. Take yeah. it to your level. Yeah, and like I think you skip over a lot of tricks in half pipe, right? Or or just in snowboarding because, um. You know, snowboarding, it's attached to your feet, right? So, like, to do a 180 is pretty much there day whatever. Once you figure out Lincoln turns, you could hop a 180 or slide one around. Um, so, I think you move past tricks quickly in snowboarding, and I think that's where what happened with me in Halfpipe is, like, yeah, like, I could, I guess, try to do some 12s, but I really don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody else is doing them. What's to say mine's going to be any better? I mean, Scotty James, shit doesn't get much better than that guy's half pipe riding right yeah. now. Like, it is so boltsy and so, like, everything's just top of the tranny every time he lands. It's so, it's like, just like Sean used to be with his tricks. Um, or I'm sure Sean still is with his tricks. <laughs> that guy somehow can never snowboard and always just look like he never took a break. But um, I think you just, I just took a step back, like, oh, whoa, like, let's do, like, switch air to regular you know pop tarts and back threes ross used to do back threes and stuff and i just like skipped over those tricks because i just went straight tail fish back five when i was fucking 14 and i didn't even do a back three in the half pipe you know um so it's just like taking a step back learning some tricks and kind of finding ways in the snowboard half pipe competition world of finding some area where nobody's doing those things and then throw a front 10 double or something, you know, to appease the judges with that. But it's a game, right? Like, okay, I'm going to do switch method into cab 10 into front double 10 into like Mickey, which is chill for me. Uh, and then maybe check a front 12 or something, you know, like you kind of needed to balance it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a game. This is, we were talking about this at the cabin, but the thing that, if anybody has ever tried to do a switch backside air in the goddamn half pipe, <laughs> I was saying, like, all right, gun to my family's head. You got to do a front 10 double in the pipe. I feel like there's a yeah. chance I could maybe do it. Gun to my parent family's head. I got to do a 15-foot switch backside air. I promise you there's no <laughs> fucking way I could ever. Like, how the fuck do you That's guys. That's where forward lean's going to th come into play. That's it, the forward yeah. lean. That's the forward lean right there. <laughs> it's, it's, uh. Benny Bright was the one who really initiated all the switch stuff. He was just like, start 
doing everything switch. Like, get on the lift switch, uh, get off the lift switch, you know, like, just ride. and switch. Yeah, just, just when you're not practicing regular, like, just be switch, just be goofy. And we started to do that more and more and more. And then, like, we'd go and mimic tricks, look at the tricks I'm doing regular and try to mimic them switch or mimic somebody else's goofy rider trick switch. Like, switch Mickeys took a long time to learn, and it was a lot of, like, definitely doing some homework on some of that stuff. But Benny Bright, he was Tora's that's brother. really smart. Tora's brother, yeah. So that's really cool that you were able to pull inspiration with Blotto and all these people telling you to do these simple tricks. What I was wondering is when you're younger, like, who inspired you when you were young, Danny Davis, you know, back, yeah. back in the day versus right now where you pulling inspo from? Yeah, that was a good topic because I was thinking about this, uh, listening to Louis a little bit, and it's changed. You know, I don't know about for you guys, but, like, I go through phases of riders. Like, I'm in a Selaznik phase right now. Like, nice. that shit. When, when he passed, um, you know, that put some shit into perspective for me. Like, whoa, like, look at how this dude was riding. And I, just that style, like, fast and kind of loose and a lot of, lot of, like, free riding, you know, um, different than what I've been into in the past. But when I was a kid, um, Keir Dillon, Ross Powers, Danny Cass, Danny, I got, um, so I had the resistance first and technical difficulties. Were those, which one came out first? I might've had technical difficulties Tech technical first. Yeah. Sure, so yeah. I had technical difficulties first. Then my uncle Dean, I think got me the resistance and my mom wasn't too hyped on the opener scene and stuff, but you know, um, but we, we got to watch it. And, uh, and then it was like stand and deliver so Jeremy Jones, or um, yeah, like Jeremy Jones and like KJ, dude. KJ was like, um, but I would say Dan and Kier and Ross were really like um, my my jam for sure. And then it evolved. From this there. was back in the day. Yeah, that was like original. Pe- like the whole grenade thing. Yeah, was like, you know, my uh, maybe like for people in music like you know, your, your Zeppelin or whatever that just like got you into that music or whatever. Like, you know. um, it kind of leads into a Patreon question. It's kind of the same question, but Brian Mills asked, I'm curious yeah, as Brian. to where Danny draws inspiration from as he is now one of the coveted core and style leaders of our culture. Whoa. Yeah. That's a great I, question. Whoa. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> Let's com- give him an air horn. That's yeah. a freaking compliment, man. Yeah, That's heavy. a question and a compliment. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, DK was just style got and Mace, like those two, when I was, you know, and that's how I say it like evolved too, was like, then I met Mason and I was like, I never knew of Mason and he's just this crazy steezy dude. And I was really, really into that. Um, but like, you just got to pull bits and pieces from everybody. I mean, I think... When I was younger, like, the front 10 tail that I used to do, like, that was a Dan cast. Like, I saw him doing those, and I just totally stole that. And Mace used to call me out for, like, stealing tricks. And the Cab 9 nose, too, maybe. And right? the Cab 9 nose, but then everybody started to go Cab 9 nose. Yeah. Sean found that and just, like, could yeah. do it whenever. Um, but, I mean, KP... Like McTwist, you know, you just pull bits from everybody. Maybe the Ross switch McTwist. Dude, Roscoe back three shifties. Like, I don't do those, but that's an inspiration for me. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, 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 sh- shout out Elijah Teeter. Oh, grab God. Kind of the original switch method guy. And didn't get cred for that. Um, but, you, you know, that's I, I think you just got to watch a lot. And, and that's why I say keep watching snowboarding because, like, now it's Rene. Now it's Sage. Now, mm-hmm. You know, that's who I'm, like, fired. When I see those parts, I'm fired up. I want to board. I want to be a better boarder. Um, and, you know, but then watching, like, a freaking old, like, Roman part or something. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's just, like. Hand drag back five. Yeah. Or, like. Dude, Dabari's got some, ins- you know, I, I don't know. Like, just depends what you're going to do and what you're trying to, you know, and I say right now I'd be becoming a bit more of a free rider or getting more into that. I think I got a pretty bad turn sometimes. 
And so I think I got something to learn in that, just like I did when I was younger, where Mason was just like, dude, you can't grab tailfish anymore. And I'm like, okay. You know, I remember being with Adam Moran one time in New Zealand, and he's like, dude, keep that arms down when you're doing turns. I'm just out there like, woo! <laughs> Every turn. Hockey you know, stop. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, and yeah, and then you learn about the hockey stop, and Terry, you know, you post something on Instagram, and Terry's like, I was going to try to turn around and get snow in your face. And you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, you know, do a turn without getting snow in your face, and you're like, oh, okay, like, I, you know, I didn't know that. You want to explain that theory for the yeah. layman's? So, you know, the hockey stop feels good, right? It's a little snow bukkake kind of thing, like just all, you know, face shots are great. And snow bukkake, huh? That's good. That's good. Is bukkake, is that the right? That's yeah, the right that's word. That's the right Absolutely. word. Absolutely. Yep. But, like, it's cool, <laughs> it's cool to get some snow on your face and in your beard. And, you know, um, I get that. And I like that, but a real good turn, like I think probably stems from surfing where they do these sick, drawn out, big turns and, uh, you know, they whack it at the end or whatever. But like most of the time you want your vision good. And when you're riding a big line too, or something, you don't want to be douching yourself in the face all the time because you're not going to be able to see. You're going to have to keep wiping away. And when you cloud yourself out on a line, you get lost and you can't see. And that's when you hit rocks and bad things happen. So yeah, making. that's why they get such good photos. Because if I get if I can't see your face, it's not a photo. There you go. Yeah. That too. That makes so much sense now. One day, I really thought about that. One day, I went out with splitboarding with uh, Nick Russell and Blotto, and we had a a rad day. We were in these big old old growth um, trees in Tahoe out in Emerald Bay. At the end of the day, I was like, "Yo, man, we get some photos." And Blotto's like, "Yeah, we got some photos." Nick did. And I'm like, oh. And he's like, yeah, dude, you got some work to do on your turn. I was just like, damn, wake up call. And it was because you <laughs> And that were was hidden. like just a couple years ago. So, like, you know, the, the, the search continues for yeah. Dan being a good free rider. Well, dude, powder turns are some of the hardest things to shoot, man. People don't always realize that. And to be like, hey, go do a powder turn. I'm going to get an insane photo. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's hard. It, you got to be a good turner, but it's not hard for Andrew Miller and the whole entire Jones crew. Yeah. Seems or like, like Josh <laughs> Dirksen. Or they know what yeah. that's, oh, that's exactly. all they do, though. That's their focus. Yeah. I mean, they're good at I that. I like that and Blotto kind of called you out. Or oh. not called you out, just was honest. You can rely on Blotto for that. Yeah. Let me know. Dude, I remember specifically a Solomon catalog shoot where we were all shooting pow slashes. Uh, Dirksen goes, does a great one. Vole goes. I remember I went, and I remember just hearing Ollie, the photographer, laughing hysterically. <laughs> I'm like, okay, laughing. that bad, yeah. huh? All right, perfect. <laughs> yep. I'll go back to the After rails. those two. <laughs> but I'm into that. You know, I'm down, and I think I was, uh, I, I, I just think that's um, the, the goal for me in snowboarding is just to keep finding things that are new and um, I can learn. And, you know, I think uh, the half pipe, and all like contests and all that stuff was a rad thing. If I never did that, um, I'd be curious about it, you know. And I, so I think it's just keep keep finding stoke and snowboarding as you you go. That's that's exactly was literally kind of my next question I wanted to dive into. It's really cool how you, you know, earlier you were talking about I came from, um, I was at Dew Tour and then I did some splitboarding. And then I went <laughs> build some cheese wedges, you know, and you're always doing these things. You're riding park, you're building the peace park. And it's like, there's, there's never really, you're, you're always evolving and growing. And I kind of want to just dissect the reasons why more so. I think sometimes too, it, it's worked against me like a little bit like good at a lot of things, not great at one thing kind of thing. Uh, you know how that, that goes. Um, but I think it's just my brain that's just or that's just how it you know when I go home to Tahoe do I love to go to North Star or like go to Boreal I mean and just ride kickers no I love to go to Boreal at night rip some kickers hit some rails and then in the daytime let's go ride some pow somewhere and uh so we go split and then you know we go back for some night riding at Boreal and skating and stuff and like just keep it going you know I think if you don't uh, I think if you you know if I stop riding half pipe too that kind of scares me like I, I you know 
I don't want to, so I got to keep riding that because I don't want to lose that stuff, you know. Stop doing a McTwist for like four years and all of a sudden it's going to be like, how did I do that? <laughs> like, oh. Especially on how big these pipes are these days. You can't just jump back into it, huh? They, yeah, I was listening to Louie's podcast talking about the 22-foot transition and honestly, I just think it's so, it is so massive, but it's so much gentler. It is. You know, you just can work your way up, like. My girlfriend, Haley, like, can still air out of, like, a 22-foot pipe because she, she'll just, like, work her way up there, like, you know, and it's just a gentle tranny, so you just get your speed and, you know, eventually Confidence, you get huh? comfortable, and yeah. then it's chill. It's, like, got nice tranny, and the 18-footers are like, wow. That makes sense. Quick. That, that's a cool subject right there, you know, uh, talking about your, your lady, Haley, uh, your significant other. You've known her forever. Forever. Since... Went Back. to SMS with her. She high went, school sweethearts, technically, right? Kind of. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. After high school, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I don't know. Kinda. No, like, we, we didn't date in high school. Oh, you so didn't? Oh, really. okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. But no. we met. Uh, actually, this is a funny story. Um, first, I wasn't even going to SMS yet. I went to Mountain Creek, New Jersey for the Pro-Am. I don't know if you remember I that I do one. remember that. Yeah. Um, and I was hanging with, like... Haley and Alex Duckworth and Lego and Jack and like we were all in this hotel and I remember like Haley said something to me and I was like I'll, I'll date you once you get your braces off like what a dick oh my god the meanest thing you could ever say to a girl and uh I lived to my word I, I, I you know I was true to my word <laughs> <laughs> so how does she do with I mean your schedule is psycho you're going Traveling, you're Dude, probably never home. It takes, a, a takes a strong woman to put up with travel like that. I mean, one thing that's kept it pretty solid, I would say, just um, is she just always had her own shit going on, you know. Um, and but always coming to the events and um, super supportive, no matter what, you know. I mean, we, we we've had our battles and stuff, you know, but uh, traveling. She's been able to travel a lot with me, so that's really helped, too. She's always had, like, gigs and stuff that she decided to take because she could travel. So it's a – I, I, me, I, you know, it's a hard to make a relationship happen like that when you're traveling all the time and one person's got a job. And uh, so it, I didn't really do much to make – compromise on that and she pretty much did all the work there you know coming to contests you know bailing from work getting work off a lot taking jobs where she could kind of work creating her own company like okay i can do this on the road like i'm gonna make my own clothing brand and um so she's just always had her own shit going on but really taking the brunt of the challenging stuff that that kind of thing brings to a relationship so i i i Oh, her uh, a lot. She's been a, a true champion in, in just following me around the world and dealing with me being gone uh, on Denali for 20 days, no contact really. And, uh, yeah. She's I mean, chill with that. Chill. Chill enough. <laughs> she's definitely yeah, I know how it goes. <laughs> She's definitely pretty supportive with it, takes it all. takes a strong woman, though, and a strong relationship. So Yeah, and I think it's more like she's always like, yeah, go climb Denali, kill it. And yeah. then, like, sat phone text, like, sh 20 days in. Yeah, and 20 days in you is know, a different and, story. And she's, like, just had surgery on her hip, and her mom's having to take care of her, and she's just like, oh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> you know? It's, it's shit like that, you know? And we've been through so much that it's it's like a joke now, you know? It's just like, we are so tight. We're such good friends. We're, you know, easily my best friend, my That's buddy. That's so rad. You know? So it's... It's uh, it's rad. You don't yeah. see enough relationships that are like that either, too. You know, we have two great examples. My folks and her folks are, oh, are really awesome. good examples of uh, of uh, relationships. Best that, friends and yeah, and work. just like they've had their troubles too, yeah. like anybody else, and uh, they just you know they get through it. Made it it's through, like if came you make out it the through, other side. It, yeah, you make it through certain stuff, you can make it through anything, right? True. Yeah, so. hell yeah. But yeah, we've had good examples. That's so. cool. That's well, awesome. Back to the Denali thing. I got a guest question from Nick. When I was talking to him last night, he said, ask him about taking a dump at 20,000 feet at the summit ridge of Denali. Yo, nice, we dude. can't. <laughs> nice, oh, do, we, do, we edit, do we have to edit this out? I don't know if that's cool. No, I don't know if that's cool in the climbing culture, but oh. it was just like, um, 
<laughs> Not that any climbers are. Dude, I mean, you have some climbers on the, on the. Everybody uh, poops. Everybody if you poops. Get up there and you got to go. What are you going to do? But, you know, the idea up in Denali is you have this can, your own can oh, you that you poop shit in. The in. Bag. And shit you in the shit can. in the bag and then it gets full and then you chuck it in a crevasse. In a, a, everyone throws it in this crevasse. A you bag? Walk. Yeah, that like your shit. Oh, I'm, okay. But isn't the bag bad for the environment? No, it's like a biodegradable oh, it's thing. it's a biodegradable shit bag. And um, <laughs> it's a biodegradable <laughs> shit bag. Okay. But it's basically, it's called a CMC. I think it stands for like clean mountain can or something like that. And it's like a giant tube like that looks like, and it's got a screw top. You poop in it, tie it up, chuck it in the crevasse uh, when the bag gets full. But I didn't bring any bags up on hill with me, and it, it's a it, that's a no no. Like you should be picking your poop up out there because it's just shit all over Denali. That's horrible. True. But I did that, and uh, I, my stomach was just I just like was you know we were at like eighteen thousand at this you know eighteen five. We were right near. I mean no, we were probably like twenty thousand. Right near the top, last little push, ridge line, can see it. And I was just like, guys, go ahead. I got to poop. And Nick was just like, no way. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> How was your poop? <laughs> you know, like, you're just like, I always felt so much better, dude. I could enjoy the summit. Yeah. <laughs> but I totally took a poop up there. You had a two-parter. You also said, uh, Danny is known for many achievements in contest boarding, <laughs> but one many like, <clears throat> but what many people likely don't know is that he holds the rec- record for the world's highest altitude McTwist at 18,000 feet in Bolivia. We don't know if, I mean, I, we're, uh, it's not a, a confirmed world record. I mean, that seems. But yeah, yeah. Bolivia, um, that trip, so sick. If you haven't seen that movie, folks, uh, Range of Mystery is a really good one. Gray Thompson made the um, good, good movie. Good movie. Good story. Jim Zellers is in it. Oh, sick. Yeah. Uh, freedom or a frequent topic of conversation we're talking about. We kind of have a little running bet on who do you think? I think you could actually be in contention because you're younger. But um, mm. we have Chad Otterstrom, uh, Todd Richards. I guess you could throw Terry into this. Hat. Oh, Terry who, will who be you, able to McTwist till he's like nine. Who do you think is going to be the oldest McTwist? That's what I'm wondering. I love Richards. He's one of the funniest people I know in my life. Um, but I think Terrier will will maybe be able to. Who's older? I, I don't know. T? I think uh, Richards is older than Chad. I know that. I don't know how. Dude, maybe Chad it doesn't o. matter the age because it's like as when Chad It's when o's you nine. can't yeah. do it anymore. Yeah, no, it's just who. Yeah. I, I, something tells me Chad O's got what a really good, good, chance? good chance of being. What age do you think you're going to be able to make time with? that guy puts in? Uh, how long? Yeah, what you. Let's make a goal. I mean, you just got to keep doing it. Or I'd be good it. to say that, like, I'll be doing them still when I'm 50, 60. When I don't know, you know, that seems like maybe I'll be done jumping, get, catching air. And do you have to land them or just hug? Hey, them? You got to land it. <laughs> you, you don't just land on your back and say, I didn't even twist back, today. But, you know, like, you got to land it. You know, yeah. close. The worst is the stomach <laughs> on the McTwist. Like, oh, yeah, you know, when you, yeah. when you chicken wing and then you, you don't finish and you just. Don't get the full rotation. That could be damaging stomach. in your like late eighties. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. You know, that could be a real like organ kind of thing. Organ at that, damage at that at that age. Um, <laughs> no, I, I I think <laughs> I think that my snowboarding. I have this goal. That's why I bought that land in Palmau because that's the retirement mountain. You never leave the ground there. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, cruisy smooth, pow huh? turns, and uh, I think that's my. That was good future thinking. Yeah, you know. It was, it was, I don't know. I question it still. (laughs) Uh, Well, this is totally not chronological order, but back in 2010, I know you've talked about it. I don't know if you're sick of talking about it, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. Uh, You had that accident where you guys were, you you were at an event. Yep. And, you know, you're partying and you crashed. And do you want to just kind of... Give us the cliff notes of what give, happened. Yeah, I'll give you some cliff notes. Kevin had just went into the hospital maybe two weeks before that. It was New Year's Day, I think, when Kev – or it was New Year's Eve maybe when Kev got hurt. And um, then we went to Mammoth, 
I did a contest. I won. I beat Sean. I got like a first and a second. That was like the first, maybe one of the first contests I had beat beaten Sean. Mm. Maybe not. But uh, so we celebrated in Mammoth, and then we got to Snow Base in Utah. And this was what Louie was saying. There was 18 foot pipes and 22 foot pipes this year. And a lot of people didn't do the 18 foot contest. So they were kind of like, you know. A B grade contest at that point in a way. Like it was just like not this twenty two foot half pipe. And I loved that. And I loved the eighteen foot pipes at that point. I was way more used to them. So I was like, hell yeah. One snow basin. And then that night we went to the mountain lab and had a party. And I ripped out of there on a quad, ran into a fence, broke my back, shattered my pelvis, broke my buddy's femur. Um and got knocked out. And so basically we get rushed to the hospital, bam, broken back, shattered pelvis. Um, and I woke up in my hospital bed and I was just like, oh boy. And I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, couldn't go to the bathroom for like two weeks. So that was like a scary part of it. Jake came and saw me in the hospital, came and hung with me for a little bit. And he was like, you're a fucking moron, but uh, to get better, and we're behind you and all this. Because I was super worried about, my mom was, just, you know, we were all just like, oh, my God, if I, like, ruin my sponsorships and things like that. I mean, it was an Olympic year, and this kid drives a four-wheeler into a fence drunk, you know. that. So we were scared of all kinds of things, and I just felt super stupid because Kev was in the hospital, and he, he just, like, was snowboarding, and I was just being an idiot. So that was like a real hard wake up for me. Um, yeah, it was, it was gnarly. Well, um, the thing that I was thinking about too is in that scenario, I wanted to ask you. Obviously, like Bert, like Jake said, he's like you're an idiot, but I'm behind you. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, there's probably people that are hard on you. Like I'm sure people are like, dude, I can't believe you did this. This is an Olympic year. This is huge. You just came off. Just beat Sean White. You just won this contest, and you have this is your chance to. You Any know. gray hair Sue Izzo has is from me. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> and, and so, what, what I wanted to ask though is, I feel like the way I would talk to myself in that scenario, I feel like I would be so hard on myself. Like I would beat myself up so much. Were you were you beating yourself up like hard? Yeah, or? you know what's crazy is Nick Russell blew out his knee right then too, and we. We just got a hotel room together, and I got a hotel room in Park City and just did all my rehab right in, in the Intermountain Healthcare there. And uh, Nick came, and my girlfriend came, my mom. Like, everybody was just, like, I think in, in hindsight, I think everybody was probably a little worried about me going, like, into, a, like, a hole. Yeah. And everyone was just so – I just owe it to everybody else because they just cooked for me. They brought me – I mean, I was in a wheelchair for – like a better part of two months. And, uh, and then I had a walker for a long time. So I just needed a lot of help and I just had people. I mean, so where was Haley, your head at? Were Haley you... was just like, just dropped her life. Rider. That's a ride or die chick. Right? Super, yeah. super. My mom dropped her life, you know, my, and, and my dad, like he, he came to Utah quite a bit and, uh, yeah, it was Dude, that was, I, I felt horrible, you know. I, I definitely went through it. But uh, honestly, I had so many positive people. And then I have a PT in Park City, this this gal, Courtney, um, who was just the most insane PT and just kept me super positive that I would, like, we'd get me back. So it was rad. I was lucky. So it's important to keep good people around you then oh, in that case. Because otherwise you probably could have. You could have gone to a bad place there, I'd imagine. Friends and family are everything in those situations, you know, and uh, with all the stuff I've experienced around all that, like Kev, when he got hurt, like, I was super thankful to, like, be close with his folks so we could, like, kind of, you know, just, like, update each other and whatever, and, you know, just, like, that whole connection was great there, you know, so. Good people, everything. Did you get in any trouble for crashing this thing? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I mean, it's you're no. on private property. Ken Block, you know, he owned the place, and and no, I felt super bad. I wrote him a letter, and and we we're we know each other now. You know, I just rode yeah. with him. Uh, we just did this thing in Boreal, last Peace Park, where he was like, we were doing some over under stuff with the 
the side by side with sick. the snow track. So that was, he's an, <laughs> that guy's amazing. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, it was relatively chill. But the, you know, the other side of it too, with the just feeling like I really messed up, was I, I really hurt my other buddy Elliot. Um, really banged him up. He was a passenger. Yeah, he broke his femur, and it's uh, a gnarly break. Yeah, man. So you know, she, she learned stuff, and it was kind of rad that um, I got to learn some of that stuff at a younger age. Yeah, and it was of, an accident. I mean, yeah, um, but it you know it was just so lucky that everyone was all right. Yeah, we're all here to chat about it because it could have really gone the other way. Hundred percent. We all know that. And if you uh, this this sounds kind of like fucked up but sometimes when you see someone that's really cocky and really a prick sometimes you're like life's never really kicked that guy in the balls or whatever right and <laughs> Perhaps, i feel like we, right? you kind of need that to forge you need a kick in the balls your, sometime. Forge your life and you, i've gotten a lot of wake-up calls before yeah. and for you, sure and then like the thing that's a trip is like you know you've been in like i said earlier you've been in these tanina to You've been in Totino's Pizza Roll commercials. You've been, you know, winning the X Games. All these crazy accolades, Denali, everything you can do, you can do since such a young age. And it's like, it's you could be like Sean White and drive around a Lamborghini and not give a fuck about snowboarding, but you're just this humble dude, dude that he's looks on like a, a whole fucking, other level. If I like, think if I was at Sean's status, I might be driving a Lamborghini and like. But I'm just saying, you still, still <laughs> even where you're at, though, you, how do you, is it because you have good people around you, or how do you stay humble? Is yeah. it because you've been kicked in the balls it, so many times? It's the yeah. people around you, for yeah. sure, you know? I mean, from a young age, my brother was just like, always was down to let me come skate with them. He's four years older than me, you know? You're four years younger than your brother, Um I, I, at least from what I understand, like a lot of brothers, like you're not just going to bring you anywhere. He brought me anywhere and I was friends with his friends and, you know, like just always had great examples and stuff. And yeah, surround yourself. Yeah, with a lot of people. brothers won't be taking you around. Yeah. Like in skate spots and stuff. And yeah. I was a, I was a rollerblader. Oh, and he was bringing you along. Wow. Yeah. That's a nice brother. He, yeah, I mean, pretty much. There yeah. was like a mo- yeah, yeah. He would take me to the skate park with him and his homies, and I would rollerblade. And then it just got to a point where they were like, "Time to get on a skate, bro." Hey, buddy. And I knew it. It was like this is whack. Um, and it was more because of what my brother was. He was. I was like, "You're way cooler than I am. I got to do what you're doing." Yeah, he's a good influence. But I've always had some some really good influences, and just people to just be like, dude. Like that's whack, or yeah, don't you, do that. Don't or, do that. Tail your fish, older bro. brother is the person, at least I can say in my life, the first person to just like cut you down at any chance possible. <laughs> yeah, like, not mine. Oh, not mine. Oh, really? Yeah. Dude, like mine would always cut me down, man. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. I I don't know. My brother's the biggest sweetheart ever. That's he was cool. always rad. I mean, we we beat each other beat each other up and stuff for sure. But end of the day, he was always we we're always back. homies. Yeah, you know, same. and yeah. like. He was really good at, at building me up for sure. Um, good boarder, good skater, um, and got me into all this stuff. But yeah, I mean, man, you got to just have good folks around and and uh, people who keep you in check. But very and if you important. Got, you got to keep your homies in check too. Hundred percent. People get out of hand. You got to give them two cents sometimes. I got another uh, question. We we talked about uh, peace pipe. Another Patreon question from Sean Colucci. Yes, Sean. He's uh, wondering how the idea of Peace Pipe came around. Also, how hard was it to make your vision of the Peace Pipe come to fruition? Well, Sean. Was it Sean? Sean. Sean, again, opportunities handed to me by the people who support me. I mean, Mountain Dew and Burton. That thing was kind of just like, all right. We do this half pipe shoot every year. What do you, you're kind of like, we want you to have some influence on this. Like, can we do some? What can we do? And it was like, let's just chuck a bunch of shit in a half pipe, kind of break it up, add some rails. And that, that was, you know, that was the first kickoff of how we kind of thought of that. And Brian Knox was a big part of that in the vision of that gunny. And, uh, and then all the riders throughout the years, too, just like, what do you guys want to ride? Uh, does this look cool? Does this look whack? And then a lot of things not working out, too. Just at the end learning of the day. as you go, huh? Yeah, experimenting, for sure. And uh, But it was made possible by just the brands that 
really care to push snowboarding. And I mean, of course, Dew Tour is really the first contest to really step up and kind of like want to do some Peace Park stuff and actually try and run a contest with it. I've taken a couple cracks at it. It's been a very, you know, relaxed event. Like kind of like, you guys <laughs> want to ride today? Like compete today, tomorrow? And uh, they were like, we want to like, we kind of want to take that and run with this. Like, let us, let us do it. And then, um, you know, the U S open now, I, I wonder if you'll see more. Yeah. You know, uh, I sure hope so. I hope people like it. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it will get better on the riding side once we can really figure out what works and what doesn't work. And those 13 foot trannies are really hard to work with. I feel like we, we learned that this year. With the combo pipe or whatever? Yeah, with, like, like Dew Tours and U.S. Open. It's just tight. It's just really hard to ride, and I think we know where those work now and where they really don't. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it sounds like these guys really listen to the riders, though. On Dude, it's, it's, I think, better than ever as yeah. far as, like, us being able to – and, I mean, I don't know what the slope-style riders feel, really, but, you know, you get – you get to have some input. That's cool. You know, um, I think I think we're all ready to see something a little different here mm -hmm. and there with those contests. Mix it up a bit. The, the three rails and then three jumps or whatever, that's starting to get a little stale. Mm -hmm. And this, and so, yeah. I can't believe the fucking 270s on where they McTwist off the goddamn rail. Yeah. Yet. Jesus <laughs> Christ. How about Sparky does, like, front board, back double... <laughs> Dude. Nine yeah. out of a rail? That was insane. Yeah, never would have thought that watching Tech Diff growing so that's, up. That's what I mean. Like, I got to stay watching because, like, I don't even know if that was a back double nine. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, that was spinning, it's flipping. so fast. Huh? I got to really, like, like, hey, yeah. Mark, that was sick. That, uh, that, 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 that rail. Oh, yeah, Wait the back double, back double 12 <laughs> off the rail. Like, yeah, yeah, back double 12. Is that what um, it was? Okay. So, to change gears to what me and Bud's like to refer to as a pivot. Pivot. A little bit of a pivot. Let's pivot, dog. We were, we were at the cabin. We were talking uh, about some cool stuff you are doing and, you know, encouraging people to vote and protect our winners mm. and stuff. And Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, we got a, a pretty crucial thing coming Crush. up here, uh, election here. And, I, you know, I think the thing that I would would say is, like, when I was 18, 19, like, I was lucky again to have people who were like, you got to vote, you got to do your part or, you know, like make sure you sign up. Like you want to have a say. Um, and that's like, it's cool. It's cool to, to vote and good to like take part in that process. I know you don't care and I don't, I respect you for not caring. I don't, I didn't either. And I, I know that it seems like some of this stuff is sort of, you don't have a – it doesn't make a difference if you do or you don't. I'm telling you, this one especially really does matter if you choose to vote or not. Um, but I get not being into it, and you don't have to be into it. But find things you care about, though. If you're not into it, find some, some stuff that that candidate's doing, uh, or which one's doing stuff that you really care about. Because whether it's protecting public lands – um, you know, fish and game stuff, um, on a, you know, on a mental health care level, uh, if it's human rights in general, what you care about, like just find some stuff, um, that you care about and that'll, that'll bring you to voting for sure. I think. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, it's a hard, it is a little bit of a process, you know, like yeah. you were saying, right? Like this will be the first. This is my first time ever voting. First Come time on, I ever registered. Really? I've never registered in my life. And and I, I got I, a I, lot I, of friends like I'll, that, though. And that that's why, I, I mean, it's good to just bring up because, like, I know it seems like it's not a big deal, but, like, uh, the, 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 sometimes these things re really have an impact. Mm -hmm. Totally. And, and I, I think there's so much arguing around voting for me growing up for, like, having a divided one, one you know, Republican, Democrat, everybody's yeah. arguing. I just was like, I don't want anything to do with this. You don't want anything to do I don't like it. the conflict or whatever. And, and I then, don't either. Yeah. I don't like the system is really tough right yeah. now. And I, I respect people who think that way, and I do too. It's a, it's a weird system we have, and it's, yeah. it's, it's challenging. And I know it seems like nothing works, nothing, gets, nothing happens, mm -hmm. uh, and it's a big argument. It's like, whose side are you on? Yeah, and uh, you're you you're on the that team or this team, and the, you just battle all the time. One hundred percent, and and uh, I I know it seems that way, and I I totally can agree with that. Yeah, and it's it's tough to 
form your own opinion too. Cause like a lot of times we think these are our own opinions, but they're just the opinions of our friends or immediate people around us, or we're just reposting what we saw on the internet and like having this platform, I've had really for the first time in my life been like, okay, I should educ I need to educate myself and, yeah. and go and, and I find that the best, the, the most progress is made is if, if you believe one thing and you can have an educated conversation without, with somebody from the other side, maybe you make some progress. You yeah. Know? Or it's maybe challenging. It, it's, it's hard to. And I would say do it without alcohol and, yeah. and, and, and stay away from dinners, yeah. you know, like have a cup of coffee and talk about that stuff or something. Yep. Um, if you're going to approach, you know, like, why man, dinners? Why, why dinners? dude, it just ruins it. Uh, People get alcohol at them. They start screaming Well, at and just other. like, it ruins a meal and it really sours the food you're putting into your True. system. And, uh, dude, I don't know. I just recommend. Do it over some coffee. <laughs> I've had some chats, you know, and like, I honestly, I mean, I'm sure everyone can tell from my social, like, I haven't been that uh, active on a voting level preaching about it before. Um, and that's just because I get a bit more passionate about it. There's just shit I care about that's in jeopardy. Um, and uh, I, I'm sorry, I just get, I'm just a yeah, bit more caring it. about the it. The stakes are higher than ever, I feel like. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, and, and pr protect our winners, pal. Um, for me, you know, they are, have been that kind of just another good friend who's given me some good info and helping me steer my life in a certain way. You're an ambassador. Um, yeah, and, and Jer lives down the street, um, Big Mountain Jer. Big Mountain Jeremy Jones is who he's referring to. Yes. Um, Jeremy is one of the greatest uh, near neighbors you could have. Um, <laughs> he's got a mini ramp. He's the man. Um, but, you know, he, he came to my house years ago. Uh, he lives on my street, and he was just like, came to me, and he was like, hey, man. It's right after I broke my back on the four-wheeler, and he was like, uh. dude, kind of saying, like, come into the mountains, like, the half pipe's rough on your body, and like whenever you're ready, I'll come, be here. Uh, come on, out. and he's true to his word. I go ride with him all the time, and uh, he really kind of like he just got me fired up to get get in get in on some of this stuff. And really, he was just like, "Hey, just like talk to the people." And really, I just used it at the beginning as like a source of information, really about voting and stuff, because you forget these dates, and it's not easy to like. I mean, you probably just went through it, and it's it's relatively easy. But the dates that you gotta be registered by and all the stuff they come up out of nowhere when you're busy. So just having them as somebody who's always kind of reminding you, get on their email program and stuff like what that. Else, what are they all about? What is Protect Our Winners all about? We're basically uh, advocating for policy change within our country and our system for the planet uh, to protect the planet. You know, uh, there's a lot of things that come up in Congress that don't get support that really are in support of the planet. Uh, so it's really getting people behind that. And really all this stuff's come a long way. Money, there's a lot more money in the renewable energy source and all that stuff. So it's like, it's all starting to make sense now for people. So the, what they've been preaching for years is just making more and more sense, which is we just need some policy that supports giving people reasons to fight for the planet and if that's a monetary thing sometimes great if yeah, it's that's what how keeps you, our eyes open yeah right? if you're passionate about the planet great then you're a shoe in you know but really it's just advocating for for the planet killer that is killer man i mean global warming's real real shit Fucking we're a. seeing it happen are you seeing these yeah. california fires oh man two of the fires burning right now are like the top three record fires in, in yeah it just keeps know? getting pushed Million, over a million acres burning right now in Cali. Really? Surprise. Anything near where you're living? Or Yeah, there's some stuff. Was some stuff up in Loyalton. I think they got it under control That's maybe good. a little up there. But I think the bad part is we're under, like, a couple more days of, like, really bad conditions. Of dryness. For, for more. There's more thunderstorms coming. And yeah. Yeah, I mean. I mean, Utah's dry. You've seen it in our air the past couple of days. Those are from fires. Those are from California. Oh, really? I, th yeah, I heard there was from, I heard there's some local ones. I'm sure well. there is, yeah. but a lot of this smoke that started. I mean, it's up, crazy. Yeah, the moon uh, last night was deep orange. Super like orange. A, yeah, fire orange moon. Super orange. You know, it's pretty fu funny. We were talking and talking about um, at the cabin. You're you're a pretty un unconfrontational person. I thought that was a good <laughs> topic. <laughs> he was talking about how we do a lot of things to avoid confrontation. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Is that true? Yeah. 
Well, and he, Granny's is saying he is a confrontation. Like, he enjoys it. Like, give, I don't mind confrontation. Temp this bulldog. Yeah. You know? That and, Boston uh, bulldog in him, I guess. Yeah. I, I'm avoided at all costs. Me too. I don't really like it. You know, and, and, and Jack Matrani um, is the king of, like, like, and confrontation isn't always a bad thing, right? Yeah. Like, like, Jack would be like, hey, let's see if we can get backstage here. And, you're, and I'm just like... Like, I don't, I don't get to talk to that guy and try to get back. And Jack just like, boop, boop, and then you're backstage. And uh, I avoid all those kind of things, too. Like, hey, should we uh, see if we can? And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I'm good where I am. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, anytime there's a confrontation, I'm definitely like, oh, damn it. <laughs> I got to step in here. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Just, that's that mi- Midwest nice. You guys are just nice people. True. Ooh. People from, from the... I guess, is Michigan Midwest? That's Midwest. Midwest, for yeah. sure, yeah. 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 North, northern Midwest. Yeah. People and I are mean, assholes in Massachusetts, man. I, I think there's a bit of that in Michigan. I think yeah. there's a bit of that everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I haven't, I've met assholes all over the world. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> if, there's, if you look for them, they're just about everywhere. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, there are rude people all over this planet. But the good ones, man. Yeah. I think Michigan folk, though, uh, they they like their um, what what I take from Michigan. I think most year is just how much my buddies just like like you know dirt bikes, boats. What they got it all. Yeah. You know, like they got every kind of tool to go have fun out in the in the country, and I I hold that dear to me. Yeah, that's awesome. I well, need to get. Got, I need to step to my roots. You got a little your harder. rig though. Let's talk yeah, about the rig. Your rig is dope, dude. Real quick, Alex Yoder. Got to thank him for it. Oh, he, he found uh, that. He thing? found that thing. Yeah, the green bomber, dude. Yeah, Derek. He's got this camper. That's named his name Derek? Derek. Derek. You want to explain explain yeah. uh, the, what Derek is? We'll insert a photo of it cuz yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, Derek is a 1979 G-class Mercedes military ambulance. And uh I bought it mm, maybe like 4 years ago now or so, but uh it goes, it tops out around 65, 70-ish downhill. If you're on a flat, um, 55, 60 is maybe. If you got the wind with you, that's your top speed on the flats. Any mountain pass, you're going 30, 40 miles an hour. Really? Yeah, it sucks. And then also, the so amenities on the inside. The amenities on the inside, that's what's under the hood. Um, uh, the amenities <laughs> on the inside, we got a three burner stove, we got a sink, we got a bed, we got a, like a little fridge that doesn't really work anymore, but she needs a little overhaul. What but about when you're driving the AC? Yeah, there ain't no AC. So I'll, I'll tell you guys how you, how you, I'll describe this car a little bit. You know, it's, it's hot. Uh, well, there's a lot of fires going on right now and I just drove to Wyoming and now I'm here in Utah and. It's mandatory shirt off, windows down. It's I got that hot. I got the noise canceling headphones on, connected to my phone because the engine's really loud. And I got a fan. It's like takes the air from outside and kicks it inside. Yeah. So when it's a buck ten in the Nevada desert and you're ripping through, you just get the hundred and ten <laughs> degree air just blowing on your chest. Damn. And, dude, it's so hot. How come you don't soup this thing up? Uh, that's what I'm saying. He's got all the bisque yeah, stacked that's- away. It's such a dope. The bisque is doing better stacked away right now. Sometimes I step <laughs> up, you know? Yeah. Like, I was thinking about getting a new engine in it. My dad, I, it's like my, you know, like, he's like, why? And I'm like, because it goes slow. He's like, it's a slow vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, but it goes like, I can't even go at the pace of traffic. So I might get a new engine in it. But Dude, what the fuck do people think when you're driving through the Nevada <laughs> desert, shirt off, noise canceling headphones on, your beard, you look like, they're like, is this guy like <laughs> no, fucking I, I cooking just, methamphetamine in the back of this thing or what? Dude? I was just telling my mom. My mom just asked me this question last night because I got out of my car and she's just like, <laughs> look at you. Shirt off, you know, just like. I saw you pull up with your shirt off and I was like, what? What's going on? It here? just get they get sweaty. I'm a sweaty guy anyway. Yeah. Um. No, I it, dude. When people pass you, they're already giving you about like 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 yeah what? like <laughs> you know. And then they see me and they're just like yeah <laughs> like extra yeah like uh, so maybe rad. like a tap on the driver like look at this guy. <laughs> but the thing that's funny too is it's you'll you'll see in the photo you can probably notice in the photo it's short you know. So I get a lot of people walking up making jokes about, like, where's the rest of it? Or, really? I think you left something behind. Or 
Yeah, it's funny. It's only like, I mean, it's super small. You can parallel park it in the city. It's great. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. I don't mind it. <laughs> well, uh, what's going? What's what's the next move these days? Yeah, what's, what's in the future what's the for future? Danny D? Well, you've, you've done a lot, you know. <laughs> it's flown by, man. I um, guess rail trip. We got that on the dockets. Gonna get on a rail trip. I promise. Um, I think you know, like obviously, the uh, future of our events this year is kind of. Up in the air. I think do tours. I think we're on. Um, so U.S. Open's canceled. U.S. Open's canceled. Um, maybe X Games if they're doing something. Um, I'm sure ESPN. But do tours on. Creative do tours sounds like it's on. So those are my two events, and then dude, I'm kind of thinking maybe I'm hyped to just hunker down in Truckee and hopefully it snows. And if it doesn't, maybe we stay local in the country though. Go to Jackson or. Montana, Idaho, Northwest. I don't know if we're going to be allowed in Canada. Oh, true, huh? We can't right now. And I then mean, what about the natural selection? That's a thing happening. Yeah, yeah right? I mean, big. we'll see who gets invited. Okay. You know, um, I think. But well, you might not get invited? Yeah, maybe not. Were you just I, you up know? there working? I on was, it? <laughs> but like, you know, I think, you know, I was talking to Liam and Trav, and it was like, you know, they're like, we don't know how, you know, quite who's invited yet, whatever, but. You know, if you're down, if you're bored, come on over to Jackson and put some work in, and I'm down. I've I've been not doing anything for quite some time now. Yeah. Um, so I went and hung at Trav's and put in some work on the course, but uh, it's looking so insane. Like, I don't even care if I don't do it because it just means that, like, I got more time to maybe work on a project that I'm working on this winter, and I get to watch it. It's going to be the sickest contest to watch. I'm Yeah. And after being there, like, Dude, I probably have some learning to do in my like to really be a contender in that shit. I probably got some some ninja stars I need to gather, you know? Like Who you got your money on? Dude, I mean, like we were saying, Bodie, I think, is like mm. he's just a like just down to manhandle things. You kinda gotta like and T Rice is like the king manhandler of, of, of mountains. And like you gotta feel like maybe like you gotta be a beast. Um Nico could certainly go Probably slay. Uh, Gigi, I would say, would probably crush at least the Jackson course. So Sweeten. 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 He's just like <laughs> pops around all those little poppers. Sweeten. He's going to be popping off everything. Raz. I don't, oh, uh, Elias, maybe. Does Blake Paul get invited to these things? I feel like Blake Paul would do well. Yeah. I think Blake's, Blake's got a lot of, like, like Mark McMorris does in the back crunch, like just lock tricks. Yeah. Where, like, oh, that wind lip? Yeah, it's like one try, crippler, mm-hmm. back set, whatever. Light as a feather. Light as a feather. That guy probably weighs 120 pounds. He's just kind of floating through the. Uh, he's floating through the air. Just doesn't even sink in. Nope. <laughs> Stays on top of the snow. Yeah, he is like he's like another being. You know, made for the like snow. Like a leaf blowing through. He doesn't the even air need snowshoes. Like, Geeky's like that. <laughs> you know, too, he man. just walks on top of the snow. <laughs> Geeky's like that as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There's the and Nicholas too. Very Snow light. elves. Mm, very light. Yeah. Question: This reverts back to Mikey's episode. He was talking about people riding lines. You ride lines. Mm. I thought this was a great question. What percentage of like lines that you ride go according to plan? When you're gonna freestyle and stuff. I heard you guys. I, I remember you guys. When you're talking like, about this, yeah, actually, I seen you drop in and do some natty blasters. Like, what percentage of those things go well? <laughs> Um, man, uh, for the good guys, like people like Nick Russell, uh, Jeremy Jones, they probably go pretty damn according, like Travis, they probably go pretty according to plan. Like I know dark matter, like I think Trav studies that thing, that line, that, that exact line for a while. Like it's, you know, you, especially when something's that complicated, there's generally only one way to ride it without getting really hurt or getting in a situation. So I think if you're riding lines, ideally they're pretty much going, going to plan. What I think changes sometimes is people are like, oh, shit, this lip's trickable. Bam. Yeah. You know, like sometimes you're rolling into something, you're like, or it's the other way. You're like, I'm going to do a back three there, and you get into it, and you're like, I can't back three this thing or whatever. It's just not. You know, it's a wall instead of a, a perfect wind lip or something, you know. But I think for the good guys, they go pretty according to plan. But what about yourself? Me? Yeah, yeah about you yourself. diverted the question. 
Divert it away from yourself. Me, they, they, uh, 50 50? 50 50. Okay. 50 I think I'm more of like a lot of the time, I'm really ambitious and I'm like, yo, I'm going back seven off that thing. And they're like, damn, word. Like, you're going to do this, that, and then back seven off that thing. I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, if the lip's good. And generally, it's it needs some love, those lips, you know, those takeoff things and stuff. So I, I feel like generally I'm like, then I do a back three, and they're like, oh, you went back three. But then you got the highway <laughs> in, and then you go back seven. Exactly. Then you get tried two. But I think, you know, first tracks are everything. Freddie K. True. Like, his, he's the first track god, you know. You know, like, first tracks are kind of oh, yeah. money. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're filming, it's important it's it's um it's preferred preferred right preferable um yeah i mean it filming too is just like i'm not great at that yet i haven't filmed a ton of video parts but, resolution uh, we were both in that movie dude oh sick that year really i like i feel like i got i had so much fun because i got to ride with like blum and, and that was rad and a couple others and but i was really frustrated with the contest bullshit or ju- just that like i signed up for that because i was like i'm gonna have like a half-baked part and i just wasn't hyped on that but i think i had a decent contest here so that was kind of good but like just felt like a waste like i had an opportunity to film for snowboarder and it's I just too hard to focus on both it's just hard to make enough time i yeah. think i was doing more contests then too um makes sense so i'm waiting for that year when i get to just like psh- you know what I think you should do that movie you were talking about where you're like, I go do all the shit. Mm. Like you go on a rail trip, you go backcountry, so you pop in and you kind of get that perspective of like, like but I would I like to go to like the Midwest and do like a few days at like my rope, like do a rope, a couple different resort. rope toe section. Yeah. No, like a rope toe section. I'd yeah. like to go to a few. Yeah. Cause like got to go home to Michigan, but Minnesota looks like it's got the, the jam. Yeah, it's so stuff, fun. Stuff, you know? And, um, so, yeah, I'd like to just go put myself in some situations. Not necessarily, like, uh, the rail trip thing, but that that I would really love to do, you know? And uh, maybe put myself in a situation with Jeremy Jones, like, where we're going to go climb some Himalayan thing or something would be kind of cool. That's insane. And you can do all that. That's cool. Yeah, it would be fun to, like, kind of do that, you know? Uh, I don't know that I can do all that. We're going to find out. Find you know, out. You know what I personally like watching as like a spectator is like the, that fly on the wall perspective of somebody following you around a contest. Because when you go to mm. contests, you're like, oh, I got a PR meeting. Like I got to sit and talk to people about the do tour. And then I got to do a signing <laughs> at this booth. And then I got to do half pipe practice. And then I got to do this. And the then I got to meet these people. They got to do the team event. Team and event. it's like this constant, like this guy is so sought after. His got to go to the snowboarder mag awards. Like really? We got ride tomorrow. Like yeah. how hard are we going to go hard at snowboard? Yeah. Mag awards? Yeah. <laughs> and I just, but like, I think <laughs> you know, like, and then following you through practice, like th- following you through the, the top where you have, you know, uh, Ryan with your board is it, it's Ryan correct? Yeah. yeah yeah you have Ryan with your board and all that stuff like I just think it would be cool to get like a glimpse peel the curtain back on that all right I, I personally like watching that stuff I think all it's right. cool so that's my two yeah we cents. don't really get to see that so I kind of like cool. the Scotty James ones do you do you follow his at all mm. I'm, uh, the, he's got a certain type of humor that you gotta like and stuff but he does a good job of like being a human and being a competitor so, I like some that. skits and whatnot mm-hmm. um, I love that stuff I, you know who um. I love James Jackson, dude. That dude's. Sh- I'm giving him an air horn. Yeah, dude. He's. Oh, he's got a nice stack of riders. Like he's he, he has a good product apparently. Good product. He's so <laughs> for the people, I would say you know what I mean. He's the Red Bull. He's a coach. Half pipe coach. Yeah, he's a coach yeah. of of I think slope too. I think he does slope style yep. too. Um, I think James is just like a rad person for those guys to bounce stuff off of, and he's like in it. For, like, he wants you to do shit that looks cool, too. Like, he knows that's what judges... You know, he wants to build a a, a rider who's going to have a good, like, repertoire. Not just, like, you got to get that spin. You got to get that next. You know, he's like, well, that shit looks way cooler, so do that. And then, you know, you can do your gnarly shit down at the bottom or whatever, you know. He's he's a, he's a good dude. Mm-hmm. Smart. Clearly, because he's got a good, lot of good riders on his program. Straight up. Yeah. Well, um... What do you think, buds? I feel like we covered a lot of stuff. We did. I got one more uh, Patreon question yes. from actually Captain Winkler. Oh, Captain Winkler. The Captain okay. Jared Winkler. 
Um, he's you guys wondering, know Jared yeah, Winkler. Oh, yeah, know? that's my dog. Yeah, he he runs Brighton. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Sick. And he's also on Patreon, which is pretty tight. Sick. So uh, he's wondering if you've ever ripped around the slopes at Brighton Resort. If so, what did you think? And if not, he'd be happy to get you some tickets and buy you some nachos to give you the full experience. Oh, nachos. Yeah, he's have offering you ever the nachos. I've spent a lot of time, at, uh, like, like over the last couple of years, I've had some passes at the Bird. I've spent some good time over at the Bird. We went and had good heli experience over there, but I haven't spent any time really? in that canyon. Well, it sounds we'll like you got the, uh, got the invite. To. I got to. I'm down. From I'll Captain Winkler. Yeah, he's That's the man, awesome. too. Well, this has been killer, Danny. You got anybody you want to thank or anything else you want to talk about? Thanks. Uh, Anybody who's ever helped me. You know, there's too many many to thank. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, yeah, thank you, Derek. I was getting into your movie a little bit last night. Oh uh, no way! And you're all in a you're, dream. You're acting, dude. <laughs> you ever look look at an acting career? No, but I think that shit's too like intense. they snap to it real quick. I you're think, a bar back. You're I doing think, gas. <laughs> like this shit's pretty funny, dude. And I you're, think you're good too. I thank you, thank you. I think uh, <laughs> I don't know. That seems like such a hustle. Yeah, like going down to L.A. and true, really trying out for things and stuff. And um, I think you get your ass kicked. I think you get your ass kicked, yeah. and I think it'd be a a bu- like I think if I was twenty, and that was what I was really trying to do, but that's like Jack Matroni and like Mace and all those guys. That is something that we like. We just always made skits. Friends Vision, man, those skits back in the day. That's cool. That was like our life. We thought it was hilarious. Had, I remember you had Jack dress up like an old guy, ride the half oh, yeah. pipe. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did he come up to you? No, it was Scott Stevens. Oh, God. God Scott was, was fully, I think, Did he not every, know? Nobody knew. Nobody knew, knew yeah. Really? Yeah. They had a professional... Makeup job yeah, It was insane. He was Uncle Dave or something. You could look that one up. That's a good one. That's a good back one. To the, back to the bisque. Did you guys ever make money on those friends' headphones? Were you guys making good money? What's Dude, going on with the that bisque? that is its own podcast. Really? Oh, my God. It's that story is crazy. Yeah. But yeah, we made headphones. Keir Dillon kind of ran that company, and um, it's not around anymore. I think Keir kind of like sold the rights to some European um, guy who, who who took him over. But you know, we were in the Mac store at one point. Damn. Uh, so that was kind of tight. But yeah, I spent money there. Did not make money. Ah, uh, <laughs> one of those deals. Yeah. I, you know, most of my other. You know, I uh, say like I. Would never take act because snowboarding has just been so good to me that it's hard to like. I tried to, yeah, be a part of a headphone company. It didn't really work. You learned. I tried to do it. We, me and Jack, made a music festival for years. Yes. Yeah, we didn't Wasted really touch on that. a ton of money there. Um, you know, so that was you too. Snowboarding seems to be an easy way to stack cheddar, and everything else seems to be a a way to just ditch the bisque. Yeah, you know, there's so a lot I, of ways to lose your bisque. You know, when we say that, like, I haven't spent a lot of money, I there's some money I've completely blown. Mm-hmm. You know, cheddar bisques on friendly gathering, blown maybe a hundy. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Over the years. Collective? Over the years. Yeah, over the years. Wow. And you did four of those? We did. Oh. Seven or eight. Seven or the eight. The first couple, you broke first, even or something, right? Or? There was a time when we broke even, not the first couple. It's got to be a lot um, of work, man. It that was, all together. but man, it was really, I enjoyed it. I we, bet. The, the people, again, that came to help us, the people that we had around us were just insane. Just I mean, helping put it all together and making yeah. sure it all went. And I looked forward to it every year. I had these two guys that I, you know, and Nick Russell used to, like, work on the, fe- like, people, all our homies just lend a hand. You yeah. know, Burton came in heavy and, like, helped us out. For the people that don't know, you want to explain what the Friendly Gathering Friendly was? Friendly Gathering was a music fest. It, like, sounds funny to, like, you know, really say that we just, like, decided to make a big party. But uh, Friendly Gathering started as a party and kind of became, like, a four- Four to five thousand person music festival that we ran in Vermont for years, and Jack Matrani was my partner in that. And uh, Jack really kicked it off and like made that thing happen. And then at one point he was like, "Dude, we should like get some good bands, you know, get like Growlers and Doctor Dog and like some of these bands that were more like indie scene and rock and psych rock and stuff like that." And yeah, it was it was super fun for years, and I would look forward to it meeting all, like these two guys I used to build everything with at the gathering. Joe and Dave, shouts Joe and Dave, they like 
I just would look forward. I'd be like, fuck, go hang with Joe and Dave. They just rip butts and, you know, they have a mini ramp. Good old boys. And I just loved hanging with them. Yeah. Killer. Killer. And then by the end, it kind of like the festivals, though, it's like sometimes like there's a lot of drugs and stuff that start creeping in, right? I I imagine. You know, at a certain point. Nitrous balloons floating around, I'm (laughs) guessing. Dude. Unreal. Unreal amount. Unreal. Especially in Vermont. Because we would clean the place up. We would clean up all the trash. And tra- just find I mean, balloons, empty our tanks. music festival. It's not like we were, like, invested in a music festival. It was yours. Like, we ran the thing. We caught people who were stealing or, like, sneaking in and stuff. You know, like, we did, e- we did everything, everything yeah. you know? So we'd be cleaning up trash. You'd pick up these things and, like, clink, clink. You know, those little ones? Oh, the little canisters. Yeah, like, tons of that. And really, like, tons of kids, like, like, it was a great music festival, very family-oriented, but people take it to another level sometimes. Yeah. A lot of LSD, um, I'm guessing. Yeah, a lot Vermont. of ambulance runs like it, uh. and, it, and, um, and stuff like that. So me and Jack got to a point, too, where, like, we weren't making money, we were spending money, and we were like, we want to take it another direction if we do it again. And yeah. we want to bring it back, but um, I think I'd like there to be more going on, more about, like, staying active and being – a part of a music festival, maybe not just checking out. I mean, I love to have beers. I love to do my thing too, but, um, you know, having a place where, uh, where it's just a bit more like more to do. And, uh, like go mountain bike and yeah, stuff. mountain bike, skate, climb, whatever. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Dope hikes to get on. And I mean, I love a good music festival. I'd love to bring that thing back, but, uh, maybe we need someone who knows how to run a budget. <laughs> Me and Jack, <laughs> dude, we were bad. <laughs> You guys just getting loose with the like, bus. Okay, we're only gonna spend a hundred grand on music. Okay, only a hundred grand. Okay, and then it'd be like two months before the fest. Tickets like aren't selling as good as we'd like. Like, all right, let's get this band. And like last minute, it's been like thirty. 40. Hoping that would boost the tickets. Hoping that would boost the tickets. And then it, sometimes it would, and sometimes yeah. it wouldn't. And then sometimes it would piss rain for three days. Oh, geez. You know, Vermont. Something you can't control. Vermont in June is pretty challenging. Yeah. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen. We had some hot ones, some wet ones. Man, it's kind of fucking wild, all the shit you've done. When you <laughs> yeah, really dude, break it down. Like, shit, it's like, and it's like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summit Denali. I don't really know much about splitboarding. I'm going to start a music festival. I don't really know shit about music festivals. Like, what the, what's the, <laughs> like, you just are like, fuck it, I'm going to go for it? Or how does the mindset get you there? Uh, I, I think there's always, like, one of my buddies involved that, like, really... It it's that you know I'm just like well, that sounds rad you know like that sounds like a fun project and uh, yeah I I don't know it's yeah I I, I make we, I think I make like it takes me a while to make decisions but when it's my homies and where to you know I can just get like pushed into stuff You're like yeah I'm down <laughs> okay <laughs> sure, non confrontational sure, sure. Oh, yeah how much money yeah, I'm, I'm in I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm kind of into that like Nick like yo dude we're making the call Are you coming into Nolly and I'm like. And that was the first year we didn't do a friendly gathering. So I could actually do it. And I was like, fuck, if there's a year, this is the year. I'm coming. Let's do but it. But it wasn't like I'm, like, staring at Denali like Nick did for six months before we went there. Like, should we do it? And, like, watching the weather and making sure it's the right year to do it. You know, I was just like, okay, He sure. did all the research. You're like, let's yeah, go. Yeah, and, like, food-wise and all that stuff, too. Nick, you know, on, always on those trips. Bolivia, too. Bolivia was the same thing. He's like, dude, you coming? Can you commit? You got to commit now. And I'm just like months in advance. Like, all right, yeah, let's do it. So I, I, I was, I got, I got people who lead me in the right direction on some of these things. Is it good people, man? It's not what it's all about. Surround yeah. yourself with the right people. Yeah. All right. Well, killer, man. I think we, I think we did it. We've been chatting for a minute, man. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you so yeah, much for coming you. on the show. And also just as for what you do for snowboarding, it's yeah. huge. You know, it's cool to have people like you involved that are staying grounded and, uh, Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate that, and I appreciate what you guys are doing. This is rad. It's That's a treat dope. to get to, to chat with you guys and uh, hang out in the garage. Hell yeah. Well, thank you guys all for listening watching. We will see you next week. Over and out from the bomb hole.